Uh, visitors to retire behind the rail, we can get started. Thank you. To give our invocation this morning, the chair recognizes Rabbi Sean Zepit of Mishkan Shalom. He is here today as the guest of Councilwoman Cindy Bass. I would ask all guests, visitors, and members to please rise. Morning. Morning. Shalom, salam, welcome, peace to all of you. Um, thank you for the honor of being able to stand with you today. These are times in which we really need to stand with each other. Even if we're seated in our hearts and souls, we need to stand with each other. It's an auspicious day in the Jewish calendar. It's actually the new month today, the new month of Kislev, which contains within it the ancient holiday of Hanukkah. And so this month, precedes a month that was considered the empty month because there is no holidays. Some of us may be carrying a sense of emptiness ourselves. But this new month, which peaks in the darkest day of the year, is exactly when we light candles for liberation and rededication and freedom from all parts of oppression. So riding the wave of Thanksgiving to be here today and this confluence in the Jewish calendar is a very, very powerful piece. I want to read a couple of quotes and then I'm going to end with a melody in honor of a recently deceased Jewish artist uh, that I've put to Psalm 77 and I know you'll all join me in the chorus or even lip sync depending on your own proclivities there. The duo of Rabbi Abraham Joshua Heschel and Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. linked arms and literally walked physically side by side in this world for civil rights. We have on our third floor of our synagogue in Maniunk, Roxborough, a picture of the two of them in their marches dedicated our third floor to social justice in this world. Our own home at Mishkan, which means a sanctuary of peace, has opened its gates in July to CB Community School, a school for kids in the foster care system, predominantly kids of color. Those 70 kids are now our rental partners and our partners in peace and coexistence that moved in in July. We are hugging each other even tighter these days and glad that the graces of the universe have brought us closer together across race and religion and various lines. So Heschel said there is no time for neutrality. And King said the ultimate measure of a person is not where she or he stands in the time of comfort and convenience, but where she or he stands at times of challenge and controversy. 
These are the times we are being asked to stand for. I was proud, both as the co-chair of the Clergy Caucus of Power with Reverend Mark Tyler of Mother Bethel and our newly appointed executive director, Reverend Greg Holston, as of two weeks ago uh, of power, um, as well as brothers and sisters who are at, uh, just finishing up at Thomas Paine across the seat, taking a stand for Standing Rock, to bring all their regards into this room with us today as well. And we recently released as the Board of Rabbis of Philadelphia statement before Thanksgiving, which I wanted to adapt as part of the prayer here this morning, and then we'll end with the psalm. As Jewish leaders, we strive to teach the values which have sustained our people for centuries, seeing each individual created in God's image, deserving respect, care, and compassion. Liberty and justice for all is a Jewish value. So we focus our hearts riding on the wave of this Thanksgiving to take a stand against racism, racist emails, graffiti, assaults that have shaken our own Philadelphia community. Hate has no place in America, least of all in the city of brotherly and sisterly love. As faithful Americans, we are absolutely committed to the safety of all. We Jews treasure freedom and know that hate damages the hater as well as the hated. Our faith has sustained us through centuries of slavery and oppression, discrimination and bigotry. Our gratitude for freedom demands that we stand with others and oppose all who attempt to intimidate or threaten our neighbors. So as we gather on this day, around tables large and small, let us welcome each soul who sits with us as a member of one human family, seeing God in one another. Offering prayers of gratitude in many languages, we lift our voices in thanks for living in this land, in this city of freedom and opportunity. Let us rededicate ourselves as you open this session to preserving the freedoms that sustain us as Americans, saying no to hate and discrimination, and joining with others who, like us, believe that our greatest strength is our diversity. This year, our song is one of hope that we can build a city and a bridge of love between our brothers and our sisters all over the land. And in my heart today, as I address you, I think of the toll booth operator who I passed through the other day. This is a day to lift all our eyes and make connections to not pass one relational moment and opportunity. And this older African-American woman, as she took uh, my ticket and we had the transactional exchange, I said, how are you doing today? She said, I'm having a hard time. We got to pray. And I said, yes, we'll pray. But we're also going to march together and we're going to stand together. Because prayers are one thing, but we need action too. And her arm reached out of the toll booth and grabbed mine and would not let go for a whole minute, saying, yes, we must do this together. I may never see you again, but you are in my heart from this moment on. And that's the type of work that is ahead of us. So in the memory of Leonard Cohen, who passed recently, and in the worms of Psalm 77, I hope you'll, you'll join me on the chorus of this to conclude this opening prayer. God, who can be trusted with power, and who may act in your place, those with a passion for justice, the who speak the truth from their hearts, who have let go of selfish interests and grow beyond their own lives. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Who see the wretched as their family, and the poor as their flesh and blood, they alone are impartial and worthy of the people's trust. Their compassion lights up the whole world, and their kindness endures forever. And we sing hallelujah, 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 hallelujah.
Blessed be your work. Thank you, Rabbi, so much. Thank you so much. Also, Again, thank you, Rabbi. Thank you. The next order of business is the approval of the journal of the meeting of Thursday, November 17, 2016, and the chair recognizes Councilman Greenlee. Thank you, Mr. President. I move that the journal of the meeting of Thursday, November 17, 2016, be approved. Can I get a second? Thank you. It has been moved and properly seconded to the journal of the meeting of Thursday, November 17, 2016. Be approved. All those in favor say aye. Those opposed, ayes have it, and the journal is approved. Next order of business is request for leaves of absence, and the chair recognizes Councilman Heenan. Thank you, Council President. On behalf of the majority, a leave of absence is requested for Councilman Kenyatta Johnson. As you heard in the caucus room, he is blessed to have another addition to his family as his wife just gave birth to right. a child today. The leave will most definitely be granted. And the chair recognizes Councilman O on behalf of the minority. Thank you very much, Council President. On behalf of the minority, there are no requests for leave of absence. Chair, thanks to the gentleman. At this time, I would like to dispense with the regular order of business, and I would like to welcome, and I want to thank everyone who has taken time out of their busy day to come down to witness the government in action. Uh, we hope your stay here today is a knowledgeable one, but also a pleasurable one, so much so that you come back again. So again, thank you so much. At this time, the chair recognizes Councilwoman Ronald Brown, who will present a resolution on my behalf, recognizing the Omega Omega Chapter of Alpha Kappa Alpha Sorority, Incorporated. With Lorena Marshall Blake and those accompanying her, please join the Councilwoman at the podium. Councilwoman. And joining Councilwoman okay. Okay. And joining Councilwoman Brown, we have Councilwoman Sherelle Parker and Councilman Derek Green. Thank you, Mr. President. As you can see, we are graced this morning with the gracious ladies in pink and green all right and we need a bigger stage yes. america's oldest uh, african-american sorority in the country <coughs> move ladies you can uh, continue to move swiftly and join us in the front here
So it's a wonderful pleasure for me to present the ladies of Alpha Kappa Alpha Sorority Incorporated and their chosen, selected, gracious colors of pink and green. And we should be advised that every Thursday we are graced with members uh, of this sorority, women in leadership here in the city, including Evelyn Sample Oates, who is the chapter member, charter member of Omega Mu Omega, and also Stephanie Phipps, who every Thursday gracious us as well and reminds us that there are women uh, of your sorority every day making a difference for those uh, in our city. So what a pleasure it is for, for me as a member of a sister sorority known as Delta Sigma Theta Sorority Incorporated yes. to have the pleasure to welcome you all. <laughs> Yes, 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 indeed, indeed it is. And so, this morning, we are recognizing and honoring the Omega Omega chapter of Alpha Kappa Alpha Sorority Incorporated on its 90th anniversary. Let's underscore that bold with exclamation points. On its 90th anniversary and celebrating the Omega Omega chapter's history their accomplishments, and their ongoing, unwavering commitment of service to all mankind. So before I start with the first whereas clause, I need to say a special thanks to Council President Clark and uh, to my soror, Councilwoman Blondell Reynolds-Brown, for allowing me to participate in this presentation. Um, and it is not by happenstance. Councilwoman Reynolds-Brown knows that it was the Omega Omega chapter of Alpha Kappa Alpha Sorority Incorporated who presented this Delta prior to her becoming a Delta, with a book scholarship when it was very much needed when she was in high school. And those are relationships that you never forget no matter what colors you wear. And whereas Alpha Kappa Alpha Sorority Incorporated, the first Greek letter organization for African American women, founded at Howard University on January 15, 1908, has grown from an initial group of 16 founders to its current membership of 283,000, with a global strength of 993 chapters. And whereas the Omega Omega chapter of Alpha Kappa Alpha Sorority Incorporated was chartered in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania on December 10th, 1926. And whereas Omega Omega is the chapter of Ethel Hedgeman Lyle, founder of Alpha Kappa Alpha Sorority in Philadelphia, listen, the chapter of noted Philadelphia educator and philanthropist Ruth Wright Hare, and the chapter of our former city councilwoman, Augusta Alexander Clark and AKA as you'll understand this Gussie who was although the second African American woman elected to this body she was the first democratic African American woman elected and if you knew Gussie Clark she didn't wear second of anything well exactly. <laughs> You're right And as a proud member of Kappa Alpha Psi Fraternity Incorporated, <laughs> it's a pleasure to be here. I'm often told that you can't spell Kappa Alpha Psi without the, the Kappa, which is combined with AK. So I'm always reminded by that, that they started it first before we came along. I'm always told by a number of the ladies here in this room about that. Whereas the Omega Omega chapter will celebrate 90 years of service and sisterhood through programs which have provided educational opportunities, address health concerns, examine economic and environmental issues, assisted in the meeting the needs of the young and the elderly, provided leadership training, saluted the arts, fostered sisterly relations, and extended its hands to the world community. And whereas Omega Omega Chapter has collaborated with and supported numerous civic, professional, religious, and fraternal organizations, and since 1995, has provided more than $1.5 million in scholarship assistance to hundreds, hundreds of deserving young scholars and community-based organizations through its annual day of sharing. And whereas the Omega Omega chapter of Alpha Kappa Alpha Sorority Incorporated is a distinguished group of 480 professional women whose vision and tireless efforts create a bond of sisterhood and committed service for the benefit of communities around the world and will continue to work diligently 
to reach goals and fulfill requirements set forth by the International Program of Alpha Kappa Alpha Sorority Incorporated. Now, therefore, be it resolved by the Council of the City of Philadelphia that we hereby honor, recognize, congratulate, celebrate, and lift up the Omega Omega chapter of Alpha Kappa Alpha Sorority Incorporated on its 90th anniversary and celebrate the Omega Omega chapter's history, their accomplishments, and unwavering ongoing commitment of service to all mankind. Further resolved that an engrossed copy of this resolution be presented to the leadership and membership of Omega Omega Chapter of Alpha Kappa Alpha Sorority Incorporated as evidence of the sincere sentiments of this legislative body. This resolution was introduced by our President, Councilman Darrell Clark, and supported by all members of the Philadelphia City Council. Let's lift up these amazing women. And the chair recognizes Lorena Marshall Blake for remarks. Thank you. Welcome. President Clark and all the members of City Council of Philadelphia family and friends, it is indeed our honor to, and we consider it a privilege on behalf of the almost 500 members of Alpha Kappa Alpha Sorority Incorporated Omega Omega and as mentioned our over 280,000 other members throughout the country our national president, Ms. Dorothy Buchanan Wilson, and our regional director, Meredith Henderson, and our former regional director, Evelyn Sample Oates, who is here with us today, to stand before you today to receive this resolution of honor and celebrating 90 years of service to this region. Through our international office has already been mentioned, our targets launching new dimensions of service, educational enrichment, health promotion, family strengthening, environmental ownership, and global impact. And our signature programs, Ascend Youth Enrichment Program. We've also had our community impact days where we were building 1,908 playgrounds, not by ourselves, but with, but with others. And we, we have done two ourselves. We were active with the voting on uh, November 8th. And again, we did the sing-along right here in City Council. But as has been stated, we are the oldest Greek letter organization founded in 1908 at Harvard University under the leadership of our founder, Ethel Hedgeman Lyle. And it's been said that leadership is about believing 100% in yourself and 200% in the people you are asking to follow. So again, we have continued to follow Ethel Hedgeman Lyle and all the other leaders. And we must remember to always remember to remember all those who have gone before us. And there are great leaders who were members of Omega Omega chapter who have been mentioned, but one who is no longer with us, but I'm sure she's up there giving the Lord direction, who was my sponsor 25 years ago, Councilwoman Augusta Alexander Carr. Amen. <laughs> And then great leaders like Dr. Ruth Wright Hare, the superintendent of the Philadelphia Public School District. And then we have a, a member who is the oldest, was the oldest member of Alpha Kappa Alpha, Sarah Winona Peters Green, who was 110 years old. She just transitioned last month, but she's still with us. She, and she said to us um, in a recent video, that with pearls of wisdom, she said, time makes the difference, and the difference is time. And then we added to that, we have to learn how to give time, time. And again, words were, no, there's no time like the presence to make a difference in someone's life. For over 90 years, we have stood flat-footed and determined to make this world a better place. Dr. Maya Angelou would say, people won't remember what you said, and they won't remember what you did, but they will always remember how you made them feel. And today, you have made us feel extra special in our pink and green. And she would also say that we must learn to put a rainbow in someone's cloud, looking every day to make it a better world. So today, again, you have made us especially proud that you took the time to honor our 90-year history of service to all mankind. 
Again, I'd like to thank all the members of Alpha Kappa Alpha who are Omega Omega Chapter who are with us today, and especially Kathleen Lacey and Crystal Lacey who have been leading the 90-year commitment, our celebration, and also I'd like to acknowledge Carlene Neal and Carol Parkinson Hall for all their hard work on helping us to put together this resolution. But it has been said as I end that life is the greatest of all statements. Make sure yours speaks volumes. And again, on behalf of Omega Mega Chapter, Alpha Kappa Alpha, Sorority Incorporated, we do thank you for this acknowledgement today of our past, our present, and we're most excited about our future. Commitment to this city, to this state, to this region, to this world. Thank you. Council of Duties.
Thank you very much, and again, congratulations. Um, let me recognize Councilman O real quick, because I know he wants to recognize. Uh, yeah. Thank you very person. much, Council President. She might have left the room, but I just want to recognize that among the group of distinguished ladies was my third grade teacher, or uh, uh, Reverend, Reverend Dr. Del Rio Lagans Berry from uh, Longstreth Elementary School, Southwest Philadelphia. Yeah. Well, we'll see you a little later to get the real story about the council. Wow. Wow. Thank you. Yeah. Well, we, I just, we're going to get the hookup over here. We'll find out the real deal about the councilman, the young councilman. Um, Chair, at this time, I'd like to recognize Councilwoman Reynolds Brown. Thank you, thank you, thank you, Mr. President. Uh, as a former educator, it's um, truly a delight for me to introduce students who ran for president at my elementary school. In fact, I had the sentimental experience last week of being inducted into the Mort McMichael School Hall of Fame. So these young people ran for president, and they included Jahil Outlaw, who's an eighth grader, recently selected to the McMichael basketball uh, team, and wants to be either a chef or an actor. I would say do both. Then we have Alexis Martin, also an eighth grader, she, a female young lady who ran for president, attended uh, attends Mort McMichael School and aspires to be a work with children and a professional dancer. We want to ask Elijah Cummings to also stand up an eighth grader who wants to enter the field of professional game designing. He wants to be a techie. <coughs> Malik McClinney, a fifth grader at the school, aspires to be what is called an astrophysicist. And then we have Isaiah Fletcher, a sixth grader who enjoys playing video games and aspires to be a professional illustrator and artist. Let's salute Philadelphia's next generation of leadership. Thank you, young people. And then lastly, we have uh, with us this morning a friend of the office, Henry Slolarski who is uh, joining us and delighted to be a part of these proceedings along with his parents, and uh, a gentleman who certainly understands that there's no time like the present. Let's salute Henry Slomarski. Stand up. All right. Thank you, Mr. President. Thank you, Councilwoman, and, and thank you for coming down. And congratulations. The next order of business is communications, and the chair requests that the Sergeant of Arms delivers the messages from the mayor to the chief clerk. Hey, Mr. Decker, if you can please read those messages. To the president and members of the Council of the City of Philadelphia, pursuant to sections 4604 and 2307 of the Home Rule Charter, I am today transmitting to the council the recommendation of the City Planning Commission on the following bills. Bill numbers 160896, 160916, 160917, 160918, 160919, 160920, 160921, 160947, 160950, 160951, 160966, 160967, 160969, 160970, and 160973. And I am pleased to advise you that on November 30, 2016, I signed all the bills which were passed by council at its session on November 17, 2016. And I am transmitting for the consideration of your honorable body a resolution approving the redevelopment contract of the Philadelphia Redevelopment Authority for the redevelopment and urban renewal of a portion of the Whitman urban renewal area identified by house number and street address as 2217 South 5th Street. And a resolution approving the redevelopment contract of the Philadelphia Redevelopment Authority for the redevelopment and urban renewal of a portion of the East Kensington redevelopment area identified by house number and street address is 3031 Collins Street. And a resolution approving the redevelopment contract of the Philadelphia Redevelopment Authority for the redevelopment and urban renewal of a portion of the 45th and Sampson urban renewal area identified by house numbers and street addresses as 125 South 46th Street, 127 through 129 South 46th Street, and 133 through 135 South 46th Street and a resolution approving the redevelopment contract of the Philadelphia Redevelopment Authority for the redevelopment and urban renewal of a portion of the model city's urban renewal area identified by house number and street address as 1900 North 23rd Street. And a resolution authorizing the Philadelphia Land Bank to dispose of certain properties located in the 5th Council District. 
and a resolution authorizing the Philadelphia Land Bank to dispose of certain properties located in the 5th Councilmanic District. And a resolution authorizing the Philadelphia Land Bank to dispose of certain properties located in the 7th Councilmanic District. And a resolution authorizing the Philadelphia Land Bank to dispose of certain properties located in the 7th Councilmanic District. And a resolution authorizing the Philadelphia Land Bank to dispose of certain properties located in the 7th Councilmanic District. And a resolution authorizing the Philadelphia Land Bank to dispose of certain properties located in the 7th Councilmanic District. And an ordinance authorizing the, the Commissioner of Public Property to accept title to all or portion of parcels that constitute the Waverly Street Community Garden, located in the area bounded by 12th Street, Waverly Street, South Quince Street, and Pine Street, and amending Chapter 15200 of the Philadelphia Code entitled Fairmount Park System, to include the Waverly Street Community Garden among the areas designated as part of the Fairmount Park System. And an ordinance authorizing the revision of lines and grades in a portion of City Plan Number 269 by relocating the easterly house line of University Avenue from a point approximately 545 feet north of Curie Boulevard to a point approximately 236 feet further northwardly, further northwardly therefrom, a variable distance eastwardly, thereby widening said University Avenue, all under certain terms and conditions. Thank you, Mr. Decker. Those messages will be printed in today's journal. Do you have any additional communications? I have none, Mr. President. Thank you very much. Next order of business is the introduction of bills and resolutions. And the chair recognizes Councilwoman Reynolds Brown. Thank you, Mr. President. I introduced this morning one bill and one non-privileged resolution. Thank you, Councilwoman. An ordinance amending Chapter 9 of Subcode A, the Philadelphia Administrative Code of Title IV of the Philadelphia Code, the Philadelphia Building Construction and Occupancy Code, entitled Fees, and Chapter 14-1000 of the Philadelphia Code, entitled Historic Preservation, to provide for fees for review by the Historical Commission of certain permit and other applications and requests for approvals. Referred to committee. And a non-privileged resolution authorizing the Commissioner of Public Property to execute and deliver to the Philadelphia Redevelopment Authority without consideration deeds conveying conditional fee simple title to certain city-owned lots or pieces of ground with the buildings and improvements thereon situated in the 19th Ward of the City of Philadelphia. This week's final pass is calendar. The Chair recognizes Councilwoman Blackwell. Thank you, Mr. President. Today I have two non-privileged resolutions and one privileged resolution for Kwanzaa signed by everyone except Ken Yada, who had other priorities. Thank you. Thank you, Councilwoman. A privileged resolution honoring and celebrating the 50th anniversary of Kwanzaa and specifically recognizing the work of, Kwanzaa Cooper of the Kwanzaa Cooperative in Philadelphia in keeping the traditions of Kwanzaa alive in our city, thus solidifying the cultural significance of Kwanzaa to our citizens and to future generations. And that will be on this week's final passes calendar. And a non-privileged resolution authorizing the Commissioner of Public Property to execute and deliver to the Philadelphia Redevelopment Authority without consideration deeds conveying conditional fees, simple title to the city on lots of pieces of ground with the buildings and improvements that are on situated in the 24th Ward of the City of Philadelphia. Next week's final passes calendar. And a non-privileged resolution approving the redevelopment contract of the Philadelphia Redevelopment Authority for the redevelopment and urban renewal of a portion of the 45th and Sansom urban renewal area identified by house numbers and street addresses as 125 South 46th Street, 127 through 129 South 46th Street and 135, 133 through 135 South 46th Street. Also next week's final passes calendar. Chair recognizes Councilman Greenlee. Thank you, Mr. President. On your behalf, I offer one bill and four resolutions. Thank you, Councilman. An ordinance authorizing EB Realty Management to construct, own, and maintain a building encroachment at 699 North Broad Street. Refer to committee. And a non-privileged resolution approving the redevelopment contract of the Philadelphia Redevelopment Authority for the redevelopment and urban renewal of a portion of the Model City's urban renewal area identified by house number and street address as 1900 North 23rd Street. Next week's final pass is calendar. And a non-privileged resolution authorizing the Philadelphia Land Bank to dispose of certain properties located in the 5th Councilmanic District. Next week's final pass is calendar. And a non-privileged resolution authorizing the Commissioner of Public Property to execute and deliver to the Philadelphia Redevelopment Authority without consideration deeds conveying conditional fees simple title to serve city on lots of pieces of ground with the buildings and improvements Iran situated in the 28th and 32nd wards of the city of Philadelphia. Next week's final pass is calendar. And a non-privileged resolution authorizing the Philadelphia Land Bank to dispose of certain properties located in the 5th Councilmanic District. Next week's final pass is calendar. The chair recognizes Councilman Heenan. Thank you, Council President. On your behalf, I offer one bill. Thank you, Councilman.
An ordinance adopting an amendment to the, to the Articles of Incorporation of the Philadelphia Energy Authority, increasing the number of members on the authority's board from five to seven, as proposed by the board in a resolution adopted November 30, 2016. Referred to committee. Chair recognizes Councilman Jones. Thank you, Mr. President. No bills today. Thank you, Councilman. Chair recognizes Councilwoman Keone Sanchez. Thank you, Mr. President. I have four non-privileged resolutions. Thank you, Councilwoman. A non purge resolution authorizing the Philadelphia Land Bank to dispose of certain properties located in the 7th, 7th Council Manor District, and a non privileged resolution authorizing the Commissioner of Public Property to execute and deliver to the Philadelphia Redevelopment Authority without consideration. These convey conditional fees simple title to serve city on lots of pieces of ground with the buildings and improvements around situated in the 23rd Ward of the City of Philadelphia, and a non privileged resolution authorizing the Philadelphia Land Bank to dispose of certain properties located in the 7th Council Manor District, and a non privileged resolution authorizing the Philadelphia Land Bank to dispose of certain properties located in the 7th Council Manor District. Those four resolutions just read by the Chief Clerk will be on next week's final passes calendar. The Chair recognizes Councilman Green. Thank you, Council President. I have two privileged resolutions. Thank you, Councilman. A privileged resolution recognizing and honoring Janet Parrish from the Philadelphia Gas Commission on the occasion of her retirement for her decades of service to the citizens of the City of Philadelphia. That will be on this week's final passes calendar. And a privilege resolution authorizing the Committee on the Environment to hold hearings regarding adoption and achievement of a zero waste goal for the City of Philadelphia. Also in this week's final passes calendar, Chair recognizes Councilwoman Parker. Thank you, Mr. President. I have one non privileged resolution and I wish to be recognized after the title is read. Thank you, Councilwoman. A non privileged resolution acknowledging the administration for, for publicly declaring their commitment to prioritizing diversity and inclusion for the upcoming rebuild initiative by setting attainable parts of participation goals for the project and further recommend organizational strategies and various policy proposals that must be employed in partnership with the, with the building trades unions and city council that will bolster efforts to attract and retain local Philadelphia based union workers as well as increase the number of minority women and disabled owned business enterprises with the long-term goal of sustain sustain sustainably increasing diversity in the building trades. Chair with us, Councilwoman Parker. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, Mr. President, for many years, we've had Philadelphia mayors, present and former members of this legislative body, uh, including council members Blackwell, Good, and yourself, Mr. President, and many others, uh, along with various advocates and members of our citizenry who have grappled with the seemingly impossible task of ensuring that there is an equitable sense of diversity and inclusion in the awarding of overall city contracts and in diversifying the building trades, which benefit greatly from doing business in the city of Philadelphia. And while our recent budget discussions and the mayor's proposal of the rebuild initiative has seemed to um, expedite this discussion and put it on the front of public policy discussions, I thought that it was necessary to begin a discussion about what I thought that this body would like to see included in any solution that is proffered to accomplish what we all hope we can achieve, and that is diversifying the trades. Um, let me thank you, Mr. President, Council Members Blackwell, Gim, Green, Squilla, and Kenona Sanchez for signing on as co-sponsors of this resolution. And I needed to state for the record that I in no way, shape, or form view this as the all-encompassing silver bullet that will achieve what we hope in diversifying the building trades and increasing the number of minorities and women that are doing business in the city of Philadelphia. However, you have to blame my 10 years of having to work in a highly charged and partisan environment in Harrisburg for the formula that I'm accustomed to using when you are trying to achieve an affirmative outcome regarding a difficult issue. 
And the way to do that is to not wait until rebuild is sort of unveiled or the way we attempt to get to the 40% goal that the administration has uh, committed to, wait until the program is unveiled and then criticize what we think is weak and or wrong about that process. So what this resolution does is simply just highlight uh, some areas that we hope that the administration, along with the building trades, will work in partnership with this legislative body in order to achieve the diversity and inclusion goals that the administration has agreed to. And while I won't read the entire resolution, I quickly, just for the benefit of the public, want to go through some of the concepts that are listed here. The first is obviously the continued partnership uh, and the enhancement of it with career and technical education here in the school district of Philadelphia. But next, extremely important, is the talk about pre-apprenticeship programs that are neighborhood-based. And for me, it is extremely important to identify that the uh, pre-apprenticeship and the recruitment process cannot begin with the building trades. It is extremely important that places of worship, anchor institutions, community-based organizations that are extremely credible in our communities have an opportunity to participate in that recruitment process because that will be the point of entry to training. So I want the public who's watching to think about whether or not you could go to Sharon, Deliverance, E9, Mother Bethel, Second Macedonia, or Triumph, and there you could go to sign up and express your interest in being recruited. They are documenting via performance measurement the number of people who sign up to be recruited, and then those who are accepted that meet the eligibility requirements are then forwarded to the pre-apprenticeship programs that are literally based in our neighborhoods. In addition to that, I want to just note that pre-apprenticeship programs won't be enough because we know a lot of people who are grown and they have families and they've been working for 20, 30, and 40 years as tradesmen and women, but they are just not members of unions in the building trades. It is our hope that some sort of executive apprenticeship program could be established similar to what the building trades already have in existence via something called a challenge test that would expedite an admission process to gain membership into the union for those who are experienced via this executive apprenticeship program. Uh, next, we did mention performance management, but none of this works, Mr. President, if the numbers aren't tracked. If we don't know how many people have attempted uh, to participate, how many people who have made it through pre-apprenticeship and the executive apprenticeship programs, and how many people have actually become journey apprentices and journeymen and members in the unions. Those numbers have to be recorded. In addition to that, as it relates to the 40% goal, the building trade should be prepared to come together and state how many new people of color and women that they will need to meet that 40% minority and women participation goal with rebuild. But I want to state for the record that the building trades can't come in and tell us how to do that without the administration via its project designers along with the engineers providing them estimates for how many people it would take to actually do the work that rebuild will consist of. Uh, in addition to that, I will tell you that we've all heard over and over from Philadelphians that they are frustrated when they see non-Philadelphians working on construction and development projects in their neighborhoods. And a major bone of contention for me is that anyone who gets the opportunity to make $37 or $40 an hour get access to retirement security and health benefits, they too could decide that they want to move out of Philadelphia. because. I will dare say that if you talk to members of the building trades now, many of them were once Philadelphia residents who when they began to receive and earn that salary and had the economic security that they could to take care of their families, they moved to areas 
outside of Philadelphia. So for us to work through this process and not incentivize Philadelphia residency and home ownership, that doesn't make good economic sense and is not worth taxpayer dollars, uh, in my opinion. In addition to that, uh, access to transportation needed to get to construction sites has often been cited as a barrier to employment. No need to reinvent the wheel. We can get government agencies, uh, quasi-government agencies such as SEPTA, PATCO, PennDOT together to figure out are there any strategies from a transportation perspective that we can come up with to help get workers to these jobs. Um, in addition to that, this issue that I'm going to mention, the issue of misclassification, I've heard a number of people mention that they think diversifying the building trades is an impossible task and a feat and it will never happen. And what I've said to them is that I know that this has been a long and arduous fight. I just said to one of our uh, former colleagues this morning, if I adopted the notion and the belief that this was an impossible task, that would mean that the fights of people like Leon Sullivan, Charlie Bowser, all founders of the black political forum were in vain. Because while we've made some, uh, some, some, some incremental progress, it hasn't been at the level that we would all aspire to be. But I don't think that the answer is saying we just need to increase the amount of non-union work available. And that is the way we will get more minorities, women, and those who are disabled into the building trades because if we accept that response we're saying that the lower wages not being guaranteed and uh, an annual income via the retirement security that we've been working on and talking about in this body and the benefits to take care of your families are not guaranteed and I, I needed to say to my colleagues, and I, I wanted to share this, when you hear me talk about the misclassification of employees, it's not because I had no, anybody had to brief me or because I had to read a white paper. I was a staff, paper, a staff member for Councilwoman Marion Tasco in this body, and we had just finished the NTI process. And the contract was awarded to a company based in New York, and I won't name their name. But they were to do important work, which was the last phase of demolishing homes in the Logan Sinking Homes area where all, almost a thousand families had been uprooted because their homes were built on ash and cinder. And this company received um, extra points in the scoring of their application because they committed to hiring residents from the community and at that time we had advocated for them to hire laborers from our local laborers 332 which actually lived in the neighborhood and the firm before they were awarded the contract said yes to any and everything that you could think of. Mr. President, Mr. President, when the firm got out to demolish the first house on 6th Street in the 9th Councilmatic District in Logan, we got calls from residents from Let's Love Logan, Mike Hayward and Sonia Bryant, saying everything that they committed to is off the table. I went out there as a staffer to see what the workforce looked like, and the workforce was from New York, and they didn't speak English. And with that being said, Mr. President, it was my first time on a construction picket line. And Vince was my partner at Local 332. And we recruited members who spoke Spanish fluently and were Latino and Hispanic from the Logan community, and they joined us. And we did what people didn't think we could do. Those native Logan residents who were from the Latino and Hispanic community talked to those workers who were working for this company and they asked them, are you earning prevailing wage? Are you receiving retirement benefits? And do you have health care? And while those workers wouldn't talk with us because I wasn't a fluent Spanish speaker, they did talk to those people who spoke their language fluently and the answer was no. With that being said, we have to make the misclassification of employees an important part of this process because I would not want anyone in Philadelphia to be taken advantage of because they need employment. 
They need employment, but they're being misclassified as independent contractors so that the, the construction company can get around paying wage taxes and business taxes and paying the employee what they deserve. In addition to that, I think the Attorney General and our city's district attorney should be involved in that process. Um, and finally, we all have seen Comcast, Pico, and many of our corporations in the, co in, in the city, they uh, provide us with something that they usually reference as an annual report. And in this annual report, they usually document contributions that they've made to neighborhood-based organizations in the city of Philadelphia and volunteer efforts that their respective companies have engaged in. Now, we know that the building trades, they do something similar to this via the LMT two that they use in reporting their efforts to the Department of Labor, but our city administration should find a way to make the reporting of those efforts an annual part of the city of Philadelphia's process for informing residents on what the trades who are benefiting from doing work in the city of Philadelphia are actually contributing to our respective communities. Uh, finally, Mr. President, let me say this. There are going to be some people who are going to thoroughly criticize this resolution as just being soft as a marshmallow. They have a right to their opinion. There are some who I've spoken with who say, Sherelle, how dare you attempt to outline how you think the pre-apprentice, executive apprentice, or any of these kind of programs should be designed. And what I've said to them is that I'm not going to wait until rebuild and its implementation process is rolled out to simply criticize it. I wanted this to be a starting point for a discussion to offer some very concrete recommendations for what we hope will be included in, in the final rebuild process. I want to say again to the, the co-sponsors of the resolution, particularly to you, Mr. President, and to all of my colleagues, thank you so very much for your patience today and uh, bearing with me and sharing my perspective. It is very important to me that the spirit and intent behind this uh, resolution was very well known and clear for the benefit of the public. So thank you all. Thank you, Councilwoman. Thank you, Councilwoman. That resolution will be on next week's final passes calendar. Chair recognizes Councilman Dunn. Thank you, uh, Council President. Today I have one bill on your behalf. Thank you, Councilman. And ordinance amending chapter 16900 of the Philadelphia Code entitled Philadelphia Workforce Housing Opportunity Zones by modifying the definitions. A bill will be referred to committee. Chair recognize Councilwoman Jim. Good morning, Council President. No Good bills morning. or resolutions. Thank you, Councilwoman. Chair recognizes Councilman Taubenberger. Good morning, Council President and uh, colleagues. Uh, I have one uh, privileged resolution that is co sponsored by Council Members Blackwell. Sanchez, O'Neill, Reynolds Brown, Dom, Heenan, President Clark, Council Members Jones, Squilla, and O. And I would like to be heard before the vote on that. At the, after, after reading of the title? Yes. Sure, Councilman. A privilege resolution authorizing the Committee on Public Health and Human Services to conduct hearings concerning the Board of Health proposed regulations relating to the tobacco retailing license and further asking the administration and the Board of Health not to move forward on any regulations pertaining to the tobacco retailing license until Council conduct, can conduct hearings on the impact these regulations could have on businesses and the surrounding communities. To recognize this Councilman Tarberger. And fellow colleagues, today I introduce the aforementioned resolution calling on Philadelphia City Council Committee on Health and Human Services to conduct hearings on the Board of Health's regulations pertaining to retail permit on selling tobacco and tobacco-related products. I first want to commend my fellow Councilperson Cindy Bass on the resolution she introduced a few weeks ago that commended the Board of Health on passing these regulations, especially pertaining to violations on selling to minors and no permits within 500 feet of schools. I think we could all agree on those are very much needed regulation. My resolution today pertains to the density issue regulation. With over 1,800 current businesses in the city of Philadelphia with a permit to sell tobacco products, 
This new regulation could possibly stop new businesses from investing in our neighborhoods, devalue current businesses, especially many of our mom and pop stores that rely on their business as a means to provide for their families. And as the son of delicatessen owners, I fully understand. I look to transfer and then look to transfer this business to either their children or eventually to sell their business as for their retirement. This may be the only pension that these people have. Many of our many of you probably already know that the Board of Health can pass regulations without these bodies' input. I one firmly believe that as a person put into office by the citizens of Philadelphia, especially these mom and top pop stores that we need to have a serious and open conversation on how this density regulation will impact not only our businesses, our, own, our business owners, but our surrounding communities here in Philadelphia. Before I was elected to council, for 23 years, I was the president of the Northeast Philadelphia Chamber of Commerce. Many of those businesses and neighborhood businesses, people I dealt with on a daily basis, have reached out to me. And I believe that many you ask to, and are asking me for their help on this matter. Hence, I have introduced this resolution today. I believe that all our citizens have a vested interest in the future and prosperity of the city of Philadelphia, have a right to come before our elected officials and give their proposed and give their uh, personal stories on how this specific regulation will impact. I look forward to having a great hearing and appreciate the support of my colleagues on this resolution. Thank you, Mr. President. Thank you, Councilman. And that will be on today's final passes calendar. Yes. I assume yes. when that comes up, there'll be other times that, to uh, speak if it's coming up later today, right? I'm Correct? sorry. I'm sorry. Uh, I mean, usually, he, if it's coming up today, I would have thought the debate would have been or the comments would have been made when it was called up at the end of the council. Yeah. I'm, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm very, very accommodating kind of okay, council president, fine. so he okay. asked me. He asked me, could he do it now, so I'm going to say yes. Well, no, I'll, I'll wait till. But it comes. actually, yeah, you're absolutely correct, okay. Councilman. So I'll wait. I have comments, the, but I'll wait till Both from the public up. and from this body. Oh. Thank you, Councilman. Chair recognizes is Councilman O'Neill. Thank you, Mr. President. I have no bills or resolutions or speeches. <laughs> Thank you, Councilman. Uh, Chair recognizes Councilman Squilla. Thank you, Mr. President. I have uh, one bill and four non-privileged resolutions. Thank you, Councilman. An ordinance authorizing the Commissioner of Public Property on behalf of the City to accept title to all or a portion of the parcels that constitute the Waverly Street Community Garden located in the area bounded by 12th Street, Waverly Street, South Quince Street, and Pine Street, and amending Chapters 15200 of the Philadelphia Code entitled Fairmont Park System to include the Waverly Street Community Garden among the areas designated as part of the Fairmont Park System. Refer to committee. And a non pillage resolution approving the redevelopment contract of the Philadelphia Redevelopment Authority for the redevelopment and urban renewal of a portion of the East Kensington redevelopment area identified by house number and street address as 3031 Collins Street. Next week's final pass is calendar. And a non privilege resolution approving the redevelopment contract of the Philadelphia Redevelopment Authority for the redevelopment and urban renewal of a portion of the Whitman urban renewal area identified by house number and street address as 2217 South 5th Street. Next week's final passes calendar. And a non pillage resolution authorizing the Commissioner of Public Property to execute and deliver to the Philadelphia Redevelopment Authority without consideration of these conveying conditional fee. Simple title of the city on lots of pieces of ground with the buildings and improvements they're on, situated in the 25th Ward of the City of Philadelphia. Also on next week's final passes calendar. And a non privileged resolution also naming South Third Street between West Oregon Avenue southerly to its terminus as Stonehouse Lane. And it will also be next week's final passes calendar. Um, I'm going to recognize Councilwoman Bass because I do believe she has something on behalf of Councilman Johnson. Yes. So thank you, Mr. President. I have two resolutions on behalf of our new father and council, Councilman Yada right. Johnson. <laughs> awesome. Thank you, Councilwoman. You're welcome. A privilege resolution authorizing Council's Committees on Commerce and Economic Development and Legislative Oversight to hold hearings examining the city's diversity and inclusion strategy for the planned $300 million investment in the Port of Philadelphia and the economic impact in the city of Philadelphia. And this week's final passes calendar. 
And a privilege resolution authorizing Council's committees on commerce and economic development and legislative oversight to hold hearings examining diversity and inclusion in SEPTA capital project spending and its economic impact in the city of Philadelphia. Also on this week's final passes calendar, and the chair again recognizes Councilwoman Bass. President, I offer five non-privileged resolutions. Thank you, Councilwoman. A non proposed resolution adopting the report issued by Council's Public Health and Human Services Committee and findings and recommendations to address Philadelphia's heroin, heroin epidemic. And that will be on next week's final passes calendar. And a non privileged resolution authorizing the Commissioner of Public Property to execute and deliver to the Philadelphia Redevelopment Authority without consideration deeds conveying additional fees to the city on lots of pieces of ground with the buildings and improvements there are situated in the 11th and 12th wards of the city of Philadelphia. Next week's final passes calendar. And a non privileged resolution authorizing the Commissioner of Public Property to execute and deliver to the Philadelphia Redevelopment Authority without consideration deeds conveying additional fees to the city sitting on lots of pieces of ground with the buildings and improvements are on, situated in the 11th Ward of the City of Philadelphia. Next week's final passes calendar. And a non privileged resolution authorizing the Commissioner of Public Property to execute and deliver to the Philadelphia Redevelopment Authority without consideration deeds conveying additional fees to the city sitting on lots of pieces of ground with the buildings and improvements are on, situated in the 17th Ward of the City of Philadelphia. Also, next week's final passes calendar. And a non-privileged resolution condemning the recent statements of President-elect Donald J. Trump, which undermined faith in America's democratic institutions, constitutional values, and individual rights. And that will be on next week's final passes calendar. And the chair recognizes Councilman O. Thank you very much, Council President. I offer uh, one privileged resolution, one bill. I'd like to be heard on the bill after the title's read, or at some point today at your choosing. <laughs> What's your pleasure, Councilman? I might as well do it right after the bill's read. I'll try to not be overly long, but I can't say I won't. I'll be real short. All right, Councilman. Okay, thank you. Thank You're you. welcome. Thank you, Councilman. I'll be as short as an ordinance authorizing city officials to file articles of incorporation to establish a non-profit corpor corporation that shall be called the Philadelphia School Teachers Reimbursement Fund for the purpose of reimbursing personal money spent by teachers of the Philadelphia School District for the purchase of supplies, materials, and equipment needed for their classrooms. Do you recognize Councilman O? Thank you very much, Council President. I mean, I think the issue of uh, and, and the, the very difficult challenge of education is a concern to everyone in this uh, building, council, the mayor's office, and the SRC. Um, and it's a, it's a difficult struggle on how to, uh, how to improve education. And we often hear, I've always heard about the fact that t some teachers, through their commitment to their classroom, use their own personal funds. Some are well, wealthy and some are not, but they use their own money. The problem that I also see from that is that we in city government, we don't exactly know how much it costs to operate our schools because we don't have any way of tracking how much personal contribution is being made for necessary items. This council passed two resolutions, one uh, honoring Leslie Grace of the Neverton School and one honoring Jada Puglise of the Jackson School. The thing about both of them is they raised money for necessary equipment through crowdfunding. Um, Leslie Grace, the first art teacher in 15 years, had no supplies. Through crowdfunding, she raised $20,000 for her classroom. And, and Jada Puglise raised over $6,000 for her classroom. But there are a lot of teachers who spend $100, $1,000, and we don't know, and they have no way of being reimbursed. We have a great example in the Philadelphia Cultural Fund where money is put into a nonprofit, and people can apply for funds for their art projects and programs. All I'm saying here is that if a teacher has spent money already for necessary items for the classroom, it's not extravagant, I'm sure they got the best bargain possible, it's coming out of their, their own pocket, they now have a source where they can submit uh, for reimbursement and the committee uh, will look and see whether it's worthwhile and how much can be reimbursed. Maybe not all of it, maybe none of it, but we'll at least have a record how much they spend and we'll have a process whereby teachers who spend their own money can now get a reimbursement. And maybe they'll do more of that, but, but you know, that's money directly into the classroom. Um, 
So that's the reason that the, the ordinance is uh, introduced. I, I think it is something that all of us really feel strongly about, and I appreciate the opportunity to introduce it, especially thank uh, Councilman uh, Janie Blackwell with all the hearings and, and a strong advocate in uh, Councilman Helen Gim that has further brought light to, to the needs, and I hope this is helpful. Thank you very much. Thank you, Councilman, and I shall be referred to committee. And a privilege resolution recognizing and honoring Ralston's, the Ralston, Ralston Center for Improving the Health and Quality of Life of Older Philadelphians on the occasion of its 200th anniversary celebration. Thank you, and that will be on today's final passes calendar. And that concludes our introduction of bills and resolutions. We will now move to our reports from the committee. And the chair recognizes Councilman Greenlee for a report from the committee on rules. Thank you, Mr. President. The Committee on Rules reports 10 bills with a favorable recommendation. Thank you, Councilman. Mr. Decker, please read that report. To the President and members of the Council of the City of Philadelphia, the Committee on Rules, which is referred to Bill Number 160720, entitled an ordinance amending Title IX of the Philadelphia Code, entitled Regulation of Businesses, Trades, and Professions, to add a new chapter limiting the use of a restrictive covenant or usage restriction that prohibits a purchaser of property from using the property as a grocery store. And Bill Number 160808, entitled an ordinance amending the Institutional Development District Master Plan of the University of Pennsylvania, by allowing for the construction of the new patient pavilion located at 1 Convention Avenue. And Bill Number 160916 entitled an ordinance to amend the Philadelphia zoning maps by changing the zoning designations of certain areas of land located within an area bounded by Comley Street, Frankfurt Avenue, Benner Street, Bruce Avenue, Devereaux Avenue, Battersby Street, Robin Street, Hawthorne Street, Hellerman Street, Sackett Street, North Street, Rowland Avenue, Tyson Avenue, Crispin Street, St. Vincent Street, Leon Street, Sheffield Avenue, Erdrick Street, Cotman Avenue, Charles Street, Tyson Avenue, Erdrick Street, Longshore Avenue, Charles Street, Devereaux Avenue, and Hawthorne Street. And Bill Number 160919 entitled an ordinance amending Title 14 of the Philadelphia Code and Title Zoning and Planning by providing for medical marijuana dispensaries and growing processing facilities. And Bill Number 160920 entitled an ordinance to amend the Philadelphia Zoning Maps by changing the zoning designations of certain areas of land located within an area bounded by Spring Garden Street, 6th Street, Callahill Street, and 9th Street. And Bill Number 160921 entitled an ordinance to amend Section 14503 of the Philadelphia Code entitled NCA Neighborhood Commercial Area Overlay District by creating the Logan Triangle NCA Overlay District. And Bill Number 160947 entitled an ordinance to amend the Philadelphia zoning maps by changing the zoning designations of certain areas of land located within an area bounded by 2nd Street, Burke Street, 3rd Street, Indiana Avenue, 2nd Street, Huntington Street, Howard Street, and Dolphin Street. And Bill Number 160951 entitled an ordinance to amend the Philadelphia zoning maps by changing the zoning designations of certain areas of land located within an area bounded by Marshall Street, Rockland Street, 6th Street, Roosevelt Boulevard, Winger Hocking Street, 11th Street, and Loudoun Street. And Bill Number 160966 entitled an ordinance amending Title 14 of the Philadelphia Code entitled Zoning and Planning by amending F Chapter 14300 entitled Administration and Procedures by changing the composition of the Civic Design Review Committee and adding additional criteria for review. And Bill Number 160969 entitled an ordinance to amend the Philadelphia Zoning Maps by changing the zoning designations of certain areas of land located within an area bounded by Spring Garden Street, Broad Street, John F. Kennedy Boulevard, and the Schuylkill River. Respectful reports that has considered the same and returns the attached bills to council with a favorable recommendation. Thank you, Mr. Decker. Chair again recognizes Councilman Greenlee. Thank you, Mr. President. I move that the rules of council be suspended so as permit first reading this day of the 10 bills that were just read into the record. Thank you. It has been moved properly second that the rules of council be suspended so as permit first reading this day of bills number 160808, bill 160916, 160919, 160920, 160921, 160947, 160951, 160966, and 160969. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Those opposed, ayes have. And these bills will be placed on our first reading calendar for today. Bill number 160720 will be placed on our first reading calendar at the next session of council. Chair now recognizes Councilwoman Blackwell for a report from the Committee on Finance. Thank you, Mr. President. The Committee on Finance reports five bills with the favorable recommendations. Thank you, Councilwoman. Mr. Decker, please read that report. The Committee on Finance, which is referred Bill Number 160326, entitled an ordinance amending Section 191701 of the Philadelphia Code entitled Tax Review Board, by providing a limited exception to the requirement that all hearings be public. 
And bill number 160810 entitled an ordinance amending chapter 19 1400 of the Philadelphia Code entitled Realty Transfer Tax by closing certain loopholes, including by amending the definition of value as it relates to acquired real estate companies, the definitions of real estate company and acquired real estate company. And bill number 160872 entitled an ordinance amending chapter 19 of the Philadelphia Code entitled Hospital Assessments to make changes to conform to state law, including by providing an exemption for certain cancer hospitals. And bill number 161001 entitled an ordinance constituting the 15th supplemental ordinance to the amended and restated general airport revenue bond ordinance, authorizing the mayor, the city controller, and the city solicitor, or a majority of them, to issue and sell one or more series of tax-exempt or taxable airport revenue bonds or notes of the city of Philadelphia. And bill number 161014, entitled and ordinance, authorizing and approving the execution and delivery of a service agreement between the City of Philadelphia and the Philadelphia Authority for Industrial Development, relating to the financing of the City of Philadelphia's affordable housing preservation programs, approving the issuance by the Philadelphia Authority for Industrial Development of bonds, notes, or other evidences of indebtedness in one or more series to finance such programs, and authorizing and approving the obligation of the City of Philadelphia to pay in full when due the service fee and other amounts payable under the service agreement. Respectfully reports it as considered the same and returns the attached bills to council with a favorable recommendation. Chair, one more time, recognize this Councilwoman Blackwell. Thank you, Mr. President. I move that the rules of council be suspended so as to permit first reading this day of bill numbers 160326, 160810, 160872. 16001 and 16014. Thank you. There's been moved and probably seconded that the rules of council be. Suspended so as amendment. First reading is there bills number 160, 326, 160810, 160872, 161001, and 161014. All those in favor say aye. aye. Those opposed, ayes have it. And these bills will be placed in our first reading calendar for today. Chair now recognizes Councilwoman Kiona Sanchez for a report from the Committee of Appropriations. Thank you, Mr. President. The Committee on Appropriations reports two bills with a favorable recommendation. Thank you. Mr. Decker, please read the report. The Committee on Appropriations, to which is referred by number 161010, entitled and Ordinance Authorizing Transfers and Appropriations for Fiscal Year 2017 from the General Fund, certain of all city offices, departments, boards, and commissions, the Water Fund, the Water Department, the Grants Revenue Fund, the Director of Finance Provision for Other Grants, the Water Fund, the County Fuels Tax Fund, the Special Gasoline Tax Fund, and the Aviation Fund, certain of all city offices, departments, boards, and commissions. And Bill number 161012 entitled an ordinance authorizing transfers and appropriations for, for fiscal year 2016 from the general fund, from certain all city offices, departments, boards, and commissions, and the grants revenue fund, the director of finance provision for other grants, to the general fund, certain all city offices, departments, boards, and commissions. Respectful reports it as considered the same and returns the attached bills to council with a favorable recommendation. Thank you. Chair again recognizes Councilwoman McEwen and Sanchez. Thank you, Mr. President. I move that the, the rules of council be suspended as to permit first reading this day of Bill Number 161010 and 161012. Thank you. It has been moved and properly seconded that the rules of council be suspended so as to permit first reading this day of Bills Number 161010 and 161012. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Those opposed, ayes have it. And these bills will be placed on our first reading calendar today. The chair now recognizes Councilman Greenlee for a report from the Committee on Law and Government. Thank you, Mr. President. The Committee on Law and Government reports four bills and one resolution with a favorable recommendation. Thank you. Mr. Decker, please read the report. The Committee on Law and Government, to which is referred by number 160678, entitled an ordinance amending Title 17 of the Philadelphia Code, entitled Contracts and Procurement, by revising and improving the city's contracting and procurement process, including by providing certain notices to be posted by the city relating to contracting decisions. And bill number 160840, entitled an ordinance amending Title 9 of the Philadelphia Code, entitled Regulation of Businesses, Trades, and Professions, by adding a new chapter on wage equity, prohibiting employers from inquiring about salary history, including definitions, duties, penalties, posting requirements, a private right of action, and other related items regarding wage equity. And Bill number 160971, entitled an ordinance providing for the submission of the qualified electors of the City of Philadelphia, of an amendment to the Philadelphia Home Rule Charter, providing for the award of certain contracts based on best value to the city. 
And <clears throat> Bill number 160972 entitled an ordinance amending section 171404 of the Philadelphia Code entitled eligibility for non-competitively bid contracts and financial assistance to provide for requirements relating to contracts awarded pursuant to the, to, to the proposed best value provisions of the Home Rule Charter. And resolution number 160981 entitled a resolution proposing an amendment to the Philadelphia Home Rule Charter to provide for the award of certain contracts based on best value to the city. Respectful reports that has considered the same and returns the attached bills and resolution to council with a favorable recommendation. Chair, can recognize Councilman Greeley. Thank you, Mr. President. I move that the rules of council be suspended so as to permit first reading this day of bill numbers 160678, 160840, 160971, and 160972. Second. Thank you. It has been moved and properly second. To allow the rules of council to be suspended, so as to permit first reading this day of bills number 160678, 160840, 160971, and 160972. All those in favor say aye. Aye, aye. Those opposed, ayes have it. And these bills will be placed on our first reading calendar today. Resolution number 160981 will be placed on our final passes calendar at our next session of council. The chair now recognizes Councilman Heenan for a report from the Committee on Public Property and Public Works. Thank you, Mr. President. The Committee on Public Property and Public, Re Public Works reports four bills out with a favorable recommendation. Thank you. Mr. Decker, please read the report. The Committee on Public Property and Public Works, which is referred bill number 160867, entitled an ordinance amending chapter 16400 of the Philadelphia Code, entitled Vacants and Surplus Properties, by incorporating an irrevocable power of attorney in all deeds. And bill number 160973, entitled an ordinance authorizing the Commissioner of Public Property and the Director of Commerce on behalf of the city to acquire an approximately 3.4 acre property known as 4848 Island Avenue. And Bill Number 161005 entitled an ordinance authorizing the Commissioner of Public Property on behalf of the city to convey a parcel of land commonly known as 3550 East Allen Street to the Philadelphia Authority for Industrial Development for further conveyance. And Bill Number 161006 entitled an ordinance amending Chapter 16700 of the Philadelphia Code entitled Philadelphia Land Bank to exempt the land bank from certain municipal claims and charges. Respectfully reports that it's considered the same and returns the attached bills to council with a favorable recommendation. Chair recognizes Councilman Heenan. Thank you, Mr. President. I move that the rules of council be suspended so as to permit first reading of this day, bill numbers 160867, 160973, 160105, and 161006. Thank you. It has been moved and properly seconded that the rules of council be suspended. So as to bring the first reading, this day of bills number 160867, 160973, 161005, and 161006. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Those opposed, ayes have it. And these bills will be placed on reading calendar today. Chair recognizes Councilman Squilla for a report from the Committee on Streets and Services. Thank you, Mr. President. The Committee on Streets and Services reports 14 bills with a favorable recommendation. Thank you. This is the report. The Committee on Streets and Services, to which is referred bill number 160614, entitled an ordinance establishing a no truck parking regulation on both sides of Edmund Street from Bly Avenue to Cotman Avenue. And bill number 160682, entitled an ordinance amending section 9605 of the Philadelphia Code, entitled towing, by adding a requirement that an illegally parked vehicle be ticketed prior to its towing from a private lot, private property, or driveway, except for hospital premises. And bill number 160866, entitled an ordinance establishing a no truck parking regulation on both sides of Frankfurt Avenue from North Street to Tyson Street. And bill number 160896 entitled an ordinance authorizing the revision of lines and grades on a portion of city plan number 16S by striking from the city plan the southeasterly 28 feet wide unopened portion of Grace Ferry Avenue from Carpenter Street to Kimball Street and from Kimball Street to a point approximately 100, 168 feet southwestwardly therefrom. And bill number 160948 entitled an ordinance amending section 9605 of the Philadelphia Code entitled sidewalk sales by prohibiting vending on both sides of the 200 through 400 block of West Allegheny Avenue between North 2nd Street and North 5th Street. And bill number 160950 entitled an ordinance authorizing the revision of lines and grades on a portion of city plan number 19S by striking from the city plan and vacating Mifflin Street from Swanson Street to Vandalia Street. And bill number 160967 entitled an ordinance authorizing hospitality three 
to construct, own, and maintain certain encroachments at the northwest corner of Chestnut Street and 33rd Streets. And Bill number 160970 entitled an ordinance authorizing the revision of lines and grades on a portion of city plan number 325 by relocating portions of certain house lines and curb lines in the vicinity of the intersection of the Roosevelt Boulevard, Sully Avenue, Home Avenue, and Pokessing Avenue. And Bill number 160999 entitled an ordinance authorizing the trustees of the University of Pennsylvania to construct, own, and maintain a building encroachment at one convention avenue and bill number one six one thousand entitled an ordinance authorizing the trustees of the university of pennsylvania to construct own and maintain a sign encroachment at 3220 through 60 south street and bill number one six one thousand two entitled an ordinance amending chapter nine six hundred of the philadelphia code entitled service and other businesses by amending section nine six oh five entitled towing to clarify requirements for application of the rotational tow system and Bill number 161008, entitled an ordinance authorizing the Pennsylvania Horticultural Society to construct, own, and maintain pedestrian enhancement encroachments at 122 through 138 Wyoming Avenue. And Bill number 161016, entitled an ordinance legalizing existing building and bay encroachments at 110, 112, and 114 Olive Street. And Bill number 161017, entitled an ordinance authorizing second and race streets to construct, own, and maintain various pedestrian enhancement encroachments at 205 Race Street. Respectfully reports it as considered the same and returns the attached bills to council with a favorable recommendation. Thank you, Chair Recognize Council Ms. Gwilla. Thank you, Mr. President. I move that the rules of council be suspended so as to permit the first reading this day of the 14 bills that were just read in the record. Thank you. It has been moved and probably second that the rules of council be suspended this day so as to permit first reading this day of the 14 bills that were just read into the record by the clerk. All those in favor say aye. aye. Those opposed, ayes had it. These bills will be on our first reading calendar today. Chair now recognizes Councilwoman Parker for a re report from the Committee on Labor and Civil Service. Thank you, Mr. President. The Committee on Labor and Civil Service reports two bills with a favorable recommendation. Thank you, Councilman. Mr. Decker, please read the report. The Committee on Labor and Civil Service, to which is referred bill number 161007, entitled An Ordinance Amending Section 3, subparagraph B, of an ordinance approved March 1, 1963, as amended, relating to agreements to administer employee retirement benefits for certain quasi-public agencies, and bill number 161013, entitled An Ordinance Amending Title 22 of the Philadelphia Code, entitled Public Employees Retirement Code, to create a new plan, entitled Plan 16, for certain employees, to expand the scope of DC plan to cover additional employees, to change contribution rates for certain employees, to amend various provisions relating to the deferred retirement option plan drop, and to make technical amendments. And amending bill number 110443 became law September 15, 2011 to revise certain effective dates relating to the drop. Respectfully reports it as considered the same and returns the attached bills to council with a favorable recommendation. Recognizes Councilwoman Parker. Thank you, Mr. President. I move that the rules of council be suspended so as to permit first reading this day of bill numbers 161007 and 161013. Thank you. It has been moved and probably second that the rules of council be suspended so as to permit first reading this day of bills number 161007, 161013. All those in favor say aye. aye. Those opposed, ayes have it. These bills will be placed on our first reading calendar at our next session of council. The next order of business is the consideration of the calendar. I note that the bills just reported from committee with suspension of the rules have been deemed to have had a first reading. These bills will be placed on our second reading and final passes calendar at our next session of council. As there are no additional bills on our first reading calendar, the chair recognizes Councilman Heenan for the purpose of calling up resolutions and bills on the second reading and final passes calendar. Thank you, Mr. President. The following bills and resolutions are being called up for second reading and final passage calendars today. Bill numbers 161022, 161023, 161024, 161026, 161027. 161033, 161034, 161036, 161037. 
All other resolutions and bills are being held. Thank you, Councilman. Before considering these bills and resolutions on the final pass this calendar, we will have our public comment session. It will go as follows. Uh, if you are interested in testifying, if you have not already done so on a bill or resolution on the final passes calendar today, I'd ask that you sign up to the table to my left. When your name is called, you will go to the podium in the middle of the council chambers. There's a device on that podium. Uh, there's a light. When that light turns green, it will be your time to speak. When the light turns yellow, you will have 30 seconds to conclude your remarks. When it turns red, we'd ask that you please adhere to the guidelines and conclude your remarks. I want to thank you very much for your cooperation. You will be given three minutes to testify. Mr. Decker, can you call the first name on the list? Joe Danahel. Commenting on 161022, 161023, 160241, 160133, and 160103. Can I testify? The President seemed to have left the station. Uh, evidently, what I have to say is important. He's heard it enough times and not acted upon it before. I have been unable to legally enjoy my legally acquired private property at 1038 West Wyoming since 1993. This government has deprived me of my 42 USC 1982 God-given property rights. This is not allowed. 40, C 42 USC 1983, 1985, 1986, 18 USC 241, 242, 2381. 2384, PA Constitution, Article 1, Section 1 through 11, among others unnamed. This government has been decreed multiple times. This government has failed to immediately remedy this situation. Can a fireman refuse to fight a fire? I, a sovereign people of the United States of America and the Pennsylvania Commonwealth, issue yet another official decree to immediately defund and stop using the Philadelphia Redevelopment Authority, Philadelphia District Attorney's Office, City Comptroller's Office, Sheriff's Department of the City of Philadelphia, until three grand juries have been fully investigated, the transfer without payment, i.e. theft, of my home at 1038 West Wyoming. Given that this government has failed to act on any official decrees, I, Joseph Danahill, as a sovereign people, issue a writ of mandamus quo warranto, notify the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania and the federal government to shut down all funding to the city of Philadelphia until such time as the city of Philadelphia can prove the city of Philadelphia and any of its agents or agencies have not violated any U.S. or PA Constitution guarantees rights, amendments, and or laws. These violations would clearly violate the city's franchise to operate, i.e. the ability to govern and conduct the business of people. Since the Constitution is a supreme law, any actions must be within the constitutional limitation at a public hearing that must be held before January 1st, 2017. It takes a lot of cooperation to create and allow monumental corruption. George Gould, commenting on 160618 and 160609. Thank you. Uh, my name is George Gould. I'm the managing attorney at Community Legal Services here in Philadelphia. And I want to talk about my strong support for two important bills that deal with the prevention of childhood lead poisoning. They are 106609, which deals with child care uh, centers. Okay, which deals with child care centers, and 106618, which deals with educational facilities. Let me start with 106618. 
uh, which was sponsored by Councilwoman Kim and other council people here. It's a very important bill. What it does, it requires uh, a certification by a licensed uh, inspector from the health department or the state environmental protection agency that the water quality in educational facilities uh, meets the substantially meets the quality standards of the Philadelphia Health Department but real importantly it also requires that the lead content in the water in the schools cannot be higher than 10 parts per billion and if it is, that whatever it is found, it has to be shut down within 24 hours. This is a very important bill. The second bill, which is sponsored by Councilwoman Blondell Reynolds, deals with child care facilities. This also is very important. This bill would require, and it would amend the existing law that requires, and it was the existing law passed by the Councilwoman, that for families under landlords who rent to families under who have children under six uh, must obtain a certificate from a licensed inspector that the property is either lead safe or lead free. In order to be lead safe, there has to be an inspection of the property, no deteriorated paint, and samples have to be taken, what are called dust wipes and submitted and they have to meet EPA requirements. This requirement is now going to be put to child care agencies and in order to get a license they're going to be have to show that the property has been inspected and in fact it meets it is either lead free or lead safe. Uh, and it will have to be done when they apply for the license. It, 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 the certification is two years so every two years, there will have to be this inspection done. This is a very important step, and I, I think it's really good that City Council is moving forward on these issues. Thank you. Thank you. Clerk, would you please read the name of the next speaker? Gray. Commenting on 161027. Thank you very much. Uh, my name is Keir Braffitt Gray. I'm actually the Chief Defender of the Defender Association of Philadelphia, as well as a co-chair on the Criminal Justice Committee. I am uh, speaking in support of the uh, Resolution 16102, the Criminal Justice Reform Committee's report. Uh, before I do, I want to thank uh, Council President Clark, as well as Councilman Jones, for their commitment to criminal justice reform. I think it is really important, especially right now, for cities to engage in this level of practice, to have a system that promotes fundamental fairness, meaning that we do not have a system that is reduced to allowing people to use bias to uh, cloud their decision makings. We also want a system that is fiscally responsible, that makes best use of taxpayer dollars, and one that promotes the utmost uh, uh, support of public safety. I think we've learned over decades that we cannot incarcerate our way to public safety and we have to use creative approaches to dealing with some of the issues that people come into our system with. Um, the Defender Association of Philadelphia supports uh, criminal justice reform by engaging in a new holistic practice. One of the things that it allowed me to do over this past uh, couple of months in working with City Council is understand the commitment that Council has to um, improving the quality of life of their constituents. Well, the Defender Association's holistic mo model does also support that mission. And I just want to let many of the council people know that we are so interested in supporting your efforts to do just that by engaging with communities on other levels than we have been in the past. Our holistic model allows us not just to look at a person as a case file, but look at what's driving the behaviors. And we've come up with very creative ways to deal with that gray area of the criminal justice system that no one really knows what to do with. We have to do more and we are willing to do that. And we're willing to partner with you to do just such. Uh, one example of that is a new initiative that we just engaged in with Big Brother Big Sister to help our girls. And I want to say one congratulations to the ladies of AKA for their 90th anniversary. And we are going to be asking you to help us with this initiative to improve the quality of life of our girls. Our girls are hurting. They are coming into our criminal justice system in record numbers and there are very little resources to deal with them. And when we have this engagement with Big Brother Big Sister, we are using grassroots efforts to give better rehabilitation options. 
We're using people in the community with stature, with, with options that can give our, our girls exposure to different things that the system cannot handle. And we're asking you to volunteer and be a big in this program because they really need it. And I think their options and opportunities in life will be better off with you involved. So I will be coming to you, but I want to congratulate you. I am an, a Delta myself, but I do stand, stand in solidarity with my sisters in service. So thank you very much. And thank you for giving me this opportunity. Thank you for your, your comment. Clerk, would you please read the name of the next speaker? Sam Barnhart. Commenting on 160687. Good afternoon. My name is Sam Bernhardt. I'm the senior Pennsylvania organizer for Food and Water Watch. Thank you for considering today several bills addressing the real public health issue that is led in our community. And thank you to the women of council for their leadership on this issue. The water crisis in Flint shined a light on the problem of, uh, of lead in water. But the Flint community still has not received the help it needs from the federal government, and unfortunately, it doesn't look like it will. Given the delays in strengthening federal regulations and uncertainties about the priorities of the new presidential administration, states and localities across the country must step up to protect their residents from lead. We urge council to pass these bills unanimously. Thank you for your comment. Clerk, would you please read the name of our next speaker? Nicole Diena. Commenting on a privilege resolution introduced by Councilman Taubenberger today, authorizing the Committee on Public Health to examine regulations, Board of Health regulations on tobacco retailing licenses. Good afternoon. My name is Nicole Deanna. I'm representing 7-Eleven franchise owners in the city of Philadelphia and like businesses. I'm here in support of Councilman Tautenberg's resolution to hold hearings on the new Board of Health regulations. These issues are too important for City Council not to have a voice in Board of Health regulations affecting your citizens and your business owners. This is not about tobacco. It is about the ramifications of this resolution and how it affects small business owners in regards to revoking and grandfathering of licenses. 7-Eleven provides extensive training for all owners, managers, and associates, as well as independent secret shopper programs to ensure execution of proper age-restricted sales. Our owners are dedicated to holding their associates accountable, but they cannot be there 24 hours a day, seven days a week. To lose a license forces the closure of the location as is stipulated by their business contract with 7-Eleven Corporation. Additionally, for a store owner to work their whole life only to lose goodwill in their business at the time they decide to sell, retire, or transfer ownership of their business makes a location unsellable without a tobacco license. This will close their doors, the owners lose that investment, the city loses wage taxes, tobacco taxes, business privilege taxes, and the sugary beverage tax, not to mention the multiple license renewal fees paid to the city annually. We ask you to consider the small business owners who are here for this community each and every day to provide services to all of us. They contribute greatly to local schools, athletic, animal, veterans, um, and fill abundance organizations all located in the city of Philadelphia. We thank you for your time, and thank you for your consideration. Thank you for your comment. Clerk, would you please read our next speaker, please? Robert Burge, also commenting on Councilman Taubenberger's tobacco retailing license resolution. Again, as the lady brings out, we have enough taxes on small businesses. Um, I've been looking at uh, trying to start a small business and there's so many taxes I would have to uh, uh, pay even to just open doors you have to start with a lot of money uh, that's why the small businesses are leaving the city right now um, and we have like uh, Mr. Townberger says there's stuff in place already we don't need to put any more um, and as the lady says, 
7-Elevens, Wawa's, they're all part of our neighborhood. If they close their store down, it's co costing the city more uh, 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 taxes and uh, wage tax. We're going to, the, the city needs not to put more taxes, there, but they need to uh, help, help the small people uh, become part of the city. I, I know two places in the last year, right here on Market Street, closed down uh, because of the taxes and the regulations, and that's not good. And we need to continually try to not put more regulations, but try to help our small people and um, try to be part, part of a solution. I know the the about the tobacco and not selling, but there's regulations already in place, and so we need not to put them uh, more more taxes. We're already putting a soda tax on uh, the uh, small businesses, like the mom and pop stores in the neighborhood, and I don't know how that's going to affect us, uh, but it's going to cost. Uh, not just the small business, it's going to cost everybody, including the people that live in the neighborhoods, that we, we have to pay more for, to get a bottle of soda. Uh, and that's uh, outrageous. And I just want to say thanks to Mr. Tangberger. You're doing a good job, sir. Thank you for your comment. Clerk, are there any other speakers? There are no other speakers in the public comment list, Mr. Chairman. Okay, so if there are no other speakers to provide public comment on today's agenda, and say, now this concludes our public comment period. Uh, we will now consider the bills and resolutions on our second reading of final passage calendars today. Uh, Clerk, would you please read the title of our bills? Uh, we will now read the title of resolution number 161022. A resolution approving the redevelopment contract of the Philadelphia Redevelopment Authority for the redevelopment and urban renewal of a portion of the West Philadelphia redevelopment area identified by house number and street address as 1467 North 53rd Street. The chair recognizes Councilman Greenlee. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I move the adoption of the resolution. It has been moved and seconded. The resolution, Bill number 160222, uh, be adopted. All in favor say, signify by saying aye. All opposed? The ayes have it. The resolution 161022 is now adopted. Clerk, would you read the title of resolution 161023? A resolution approving the First Amendment to the redevelopment contract of the Philadelphia Redevelopment Authority for the redevelopment and urban renewal of a portion of the Model City's urban renewal area identified by house numbers and street addresses as 3210 through 12, 3211 through 19, 3216, 3220 through 3226, 3223 through 3237, 3230, and 3236 Arlington Street, 3225 through 27, and 3233 through 37 Westburg Street, 3210 through 14, 3217, 3220, 3223 through 25, 3224, 3228, 3229, 3232 through 34, and 3233 through 37 Monument Street. Chair recognizes Council McGrailly the resolution. 161023. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I move the adoption of the resolution. It has been moved and seconded. The resolution 16023 be adopted. All those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed? The ayes have it. Resolution is adopted. Clerk, would you please read resolution number 161024. A resolution authorizing the Philadelphia Redevelopment Authority to dispose of certain properties located in the 5th Council Manor District that will be transferred by the city to the authority by conveyance of such properties to the Philadelphia Land Bank. Chair recognizes Councilman Greeley. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I move the adoption of the resolution. It has been seconded and the resolution to be adopted, resolution 161024. All those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed? Ayes have it. 
Resolution 161024 is now adopted. Clerk, would you please read the title of Resolution 161026. A resolution also naming the 2100 block of North 56th Street as Will Smith Senior Way in honor of the late father of comedian and actor Will Smith to commemorate his life and service to the West Philadelphia community. Thank you. Chair recognizes Councilman Jones. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I move for its adoption. It has been moved and seconded. The resolution 161026 be adopted. All those in favor signify by saying aye. aye. Nay. The ayes have it. Resolution 161026 is now adopted. Chair recognize, or Clerk, would you please read the resolution 161027. A resolution adopting the report issued by Council Special Committee on Criminal Justice Reform containing recommendations on how the city can minimize the amount of nonviolent defenders who are incarcerated pre-trial. Chair recognizes Councilman Jones. Uh, yes, Mr. Chairman, I'd like to speak on this uh, resolution before we adopt. Is that all right? You may. Thank you. Um, I want to thank all of the members of the Justice Reform Committee and particularly Council President uh, Clark for uh, authorizing us to move forward. This, uh, um, this uh, interim report highlights three key uh, points. One is GPS uh, ankle bracelet technology to reduce the census on State Road. Number two, it deals with something that uh, Councilwoman Blackwell has long uh, been an advocate for, day reporting centers. And then the third thing is to look at risk assessment to determine whether people are bad people or had a bad day and can be considered non-threatening to themselves and the public. So I wanted to publicly thank uh, Council President Clark for moving this forward and to uh, also alert you that we are uh, out of those three moving swiftly uh, to take a hard look at day reporting centers again this is some, not something new. This is something that Councilwoman Blackwell bravely uh, put forth in uh, prior sessions. And we have some considerations for us in time for budget deliberation. I want to thank all of the colleagues that are serving on this committee. Thank you. Again, the chair recognizes Councilman Jones on the motion, resolution 161027. Thank you, Mr. Leader. I move for the adoption. Second. It has been moved and second. The resolution be adopted. All those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed? The ayes have it. Resolution 161027 is now adopted. <laughs> Thank you, Councilman. Uh, Mr. Decker, 161033. A resolution authorizing the Commissioner of Public Property to execute and deliver to the Philadelphia Redevelopment Authority without consideration deeds conveying conditional fee simple title to certain city on lots of pieces of ground with the buildings and improvements are on situated in the 18th and 23rd wards of the City of Philadelphia. Chair, Chair recognizes Councilwoman McKeown and Sanchez. Thank you, Mr. President. I move for its adoption. It's been moved and properly second. All those in favor say aye. Those opposed, I have it, and Resolution 161033 is adopted. Mr. Decker, 161034. A resolution authorizing the Philadelphia Redevelopment Authority to dispose of certain properties located in the 7th Council Manor District that will be transferred by the City to the Authority by conveyance of such properties to the Philadelphia Land Bank. Chair again recognizes Councilwoman McKeown and Sanchez. Thank you, uh, Mr. President. I move for its adoption. This bill moved and properly second. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Those opposed, ayes have it. Resolution 161034 is adopted. Mr. Decker, 161036. A resolution approving the redevelopment contract of the Philadelphia Redevelopment Authority for the redevelopment and urban renewal of a portion of the new Kensington Fishtown urban renewal area identified by house numbers and street addresses as 2476 Jasper Street and 2478 Jasper Street. Chair recognizes Councilman Squilla. Thank you, Mr. President. I move for the adoption of the resolution. Second. It's been moved and properly second. All those in favor say aye. Those opposed, ayes have it. 161036 has been adopted. Mr. Decker, 161037. A resolution approving the redevelopment contract of the Philadelphia Redevelopment Authority for the redevelopment and urban renewal of a portion of the new Kensington Fishtown urban renewal area identified by house number and street address as 2511 Survivor Street. 
Chair again recognizes Councilman Squirrel. Thank you, Mr. President. I move for the adoption of resolution. It's been moved and probably second. All those in favor say aye. aye. Those opposed, the ayes have it. 161037 is adopted. Mr. Decker, please read the title 160512. An ordinance to amend the Philadelphia zoning maps by changing the zoning designations of certain areas of land located within an area bounded by Sarah Street, Wildy Street, Shackenheim Maxon Street, and the Delaware <coughs> Expressway. Chair recognizes Councilman Greenlee. Thank you, Mr. President. On your behalf, I move that Bill Number 160512 be withdrawn. It's been moved properly. Second, all those in favor? Aye. Those opposed? Ayes have it. And 161512 is withdrawn. Mr. Decker, 160715. An ordinance to amend the Philadelphia zoning maps by changing the zoning designations of certain areas of land located within an area bounded by Front Street, Amber Street, Lehigh Avenue, and Emerald Street. This bill has been heard on two separate days. The question is, shall the bill pass finally? Mr. Decker, call the roll. Councilwoman Bass. Councilwoman Blackwell. Councilman Dom. Councilman Green. Councilman Greenlee. Councilwoman Gim. Councilman Heenan. Councilman Jones. Councilman O'Neill. Councilman O. Councilwoman Parker. Councilwoman Kenan Sanchez. Councilwoman Reynolds Brown. Councilman Squilla. Councilman Taubenberger. Council President Clark. Aye, the ayes are 16 and nays are 0. Majority of members present. Voting in affirmative. The bill passes. Mr. Decker, 160-716. An ordinance amending Chapter 14600 of the Philadelphia Code entitled Use Regulations by modifying certain standards for ground floor uses in the CMX2 and CMX2.5 districts. This bill has been heard on two separate days. The question is, shall the bill pass finally? Mr. Decker, call the roll. Councilwoman Bass. Councilwoman Blackwell. Councilman Dom. Councilman Green. Councilman Greenlee, Councilwoman Gim, Councilman Heenan, Councilman Jones, Councilman O'Neill, Councilman O, Councilwoman Parker, Councilwoman Conan Sanchez, Councilwoman Reynolds Brown, Councilman Squilla, Councilman Taubenberger, Council President Clark. Aye, the ayes are 16 and nays are 0. Majority members present. Voting in from the, the bill passes. Mr. Decker, 160776. An ordinance to amend the Philadelphia zoning maps by changing the zoning designations of certain areas of land located within an area bounded by Front Street, Oregon Avenue, 10th Street, and the Schuylkill Expressway, I-76. This bill has been heard on two separate days. The question is, shall the bill pass finally? Mr. Decker, call the roll. Councilwoman Bass. Councilwoman Blackwell. Councilman Dom. Councilman Green. Councilman Greenlee. Councilwoman Gim. Councilman Heenan, Councilman Jones, Councilman O'Neill, Councilman O, Councilwoman Parker, Councilwoman Conrad Sanchez, Councilwoman Reynolds Brown, Councilman Squillow, Councilman Taubenberger, Council President Clark. Aye, the ayes are 16 and nays are 0. Majority of members present voting in the affirmative. The bill passes. Mr. Decker, 160. A65. An ordinance to amend Chapter 14300 of the Philadelphia Code entitled Administration and Procedures by modifying the public notice requirements and making related changes. This bill has been read on two separate days. The question is, shall the bill pass finally? Mr. Decker, call the roll. Councilwoman Bass. Councilwoman Blackwell. Councilman Dom. Councilman Green. Councilman Greenlee. Councilwoman Gim. Councilman Heenan. Councilman Jones. Councilman O'Neill. Councilman O. Councilwoman Parker, Councilwoman Conan Sanchez, Councilwoman Reynolds Brown, Councilman Squilla, Councilman Taubenberger, Council President Clark. All right, the ayes are 16 and nays are 0. Majority of members present voting in affirmative. The bill passes. Mr. Decker, 160-869. An ordinance to amend the Philadelphia zoning maps by changing the zoning designations of certain areas of land located within an area bounded by Lincoln Drive, Wissahickon Avenue, Schoolhouse Lane, the Oak Road, Midvale Avenue, Crescent Avenue, and Gypsy Lane, and to adopt the master plan for Philadelphia University and approving various construction projects pursuant to that plan. Chair recognizes Councilman O'Neill. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, I'm sorry. Bob, there's something. Hi. Oh, this is my I'm Yes. I'm sorry. Yeah, Appreciate it's okay. It. Uh, this is the second time I'll be abstaining on this matter, but under a different bill, it was withdrawn after passage. Uh, the law firm I'm associated with represents a party of interest here, so I will be abstaining. Thank you. Thank you, Councilman. Put up. Mr. Decker, you, did you call the read the title already? Did you already read the title? Yeah, okay. This bill has been heard on two separate days. The question is, shall the bill pass finally? Mr. Decker, call the roll. Councilwoman Bass. 
Councilwoman Blackwell, Councilman Dom, Councilman Green, Councilman Greenlee, Councilwoman Gim, Councilman Heenan, Councilman Jones, Councilman O'Neill is abstaining, Councilman O, Councilwoman Parker, Councilwoman Corona Sanchez, Councilwoman Reynolds Brown, Councilman Squilla, Councilman Taubenberger, Council President Clark. All right, the ayes are 15, the nays are zero. Majority members present, voting in affirmed that the bill passes. Mr. Decker, 160, 917. An ordinance to amend the full of his zoning maps by changing the zoning designations of certain areas of land located within an area bounded by Charles Street, Unru Avenue, Marsden Street, Levick Street, Cottage Street, Devereux Avenue, Marsden Street, Benner Street, Dittman Street, Cheltenham Avenue, Harbison Avenue, Charles Street, Comley Street, Mulberry Street, Harbison Avenue, and Devereux Avenue. This bill had been heard on two separate days. The question is, shall the bill pass finally? Mr. Decker, call the roll. Councilwoman Bass. Councilwoman Blackwell. Councilman Dom. Councilman Green. Councilman Greenlee. Councilwoman Gim. Councilman Heenan. Councilman Jones. Councilman O'Neill. Councilman O. Councilwoman Parker. Councilwoman Conan Sanchez. Councilwoman Reynolds Brown. Councilman Squilla. Councilman Taubenberger. House President Clark. All right, the ayes are 16 and nays are zero. Majority of members present voting in affirmative. The bill passes. Mr. Decker, 160-918. An ordinance to amend the Philadelphia zoning maps by changing the zoning designations of certain areas of land located within an area bounded by Charles Street, Harbison Avenue, and Cheltenham Avenue. This bill has been heard on two separate days. The question is shall the bill pass finally? Mr. Decker, call the roll. Councilwoman Bass. Councilwoman Blackwell. Councilman Don. Councilman Green. Councilman Greenlee, Councilwoman Gim, Councilman Heenan, Councilman Jones, Councilman O'Neill, Councilman O, Councilwoman Parker, Councilwoman Conan Sanchez, Councilwoman Reynolds Brown, Councilman Squilla, Councilman Taubenberger, Council President Clark. All right, the ayes are 16 and nays are zero. Majority of members present, voting in affirms that the bill passes. Mr. Decker, 160 968. An ordinance authorizing the Commissioner of Public Property of the City of Philadelphia and in cooperation with the Philadelphia Municipal Authority to undertake a project to promote the health, safety, and welfare of the residents of the City of Philadelphia, authorizing and approving a project including the refunding of bonds issued to finance the new youth center facility, an amendment to an existing ground lease between the City of Philadelphia and the Philadelphia Municipal Authority, an amendment to an existing prime lease between the City of Philadelphia and the Philadelphia Municipal Authority, and the assignment of such Amendment to a trustee and the obligation of the City of Philadelphia to pay rent under the prime lease as amended when due. This bill has been heard on two separate days. The question is shall the bill pass finally? Mr. Decker, call the roll. Councilwoman Bass. <laughs> Councilwoman Blackwell. Councilman Dom. Councilman Green. Councilman Greenlee. Councilwoman Gim. Councilman Heenan. Councilman Jones. Councilman O'Neill. Councilman O. Councilwoman Parker. Councilwoman Conan Sanchez, Councilwoman Reynolds Brown, Councilman Squilla, Councilman Taubenberger, Council President Clark. All right, ayes are 16 and nays are zero. Majority of members present voting in affirmed that the bill passes. Mr. Decker, 160, 609. An ordinance amending Chapter 6, 800 of the Philadelphia Code entitled Lead Paint Disclosure to require as a condition of licensing family child daycare facilities built before March 1978 that such facilities be certified as lead safe or lead free and amending Section B425 of the Code entitled Family Daycare Facilities and Section F409 of the Code entitled Family Daycare Facilities to make conforming changes. This bill has been heard on two separate days. The question is shall the bill pass finally? Mr. Decker, call the roll. Councilwoman Bass. Councilwoman Blackwell, Councilman Dom, Councilman Green, Councilman Greenlee, Councilwoman Gim, Councilman Heenan, Councilman Jones, Councilman O'Neill, Councilman O, Councilwoman Parker, Councilwoman Conan Sanchez, Councilwoman Reynolds Brown, Councilman Squilla, Councilman Taubenberger, Council President Clark. All right, ayes are 16 and nays are zero. Majority of members present voting in affirmative. The bill passes. Uh, An ordinance amending Section A703.1 of Title IV of the Philadelphia Code, entitled Special Certificate of Inspection, to require certification of water quality as a condition of occupancy for certain buildings used for education. This bill has been heard on two separate days. The question is, shall the bill pass finally? Mr. Decker, call the roll. Councilwoman Bass. Councilwoman Blackwell. 
Councilman Dom. Councilman Green. Councilman Greenlee. Councilwoman Gim. Councilman Heenan. Councilman Jones. Councilman O'Neill. Councilman O. Councilwoman Parker. Councilwoman Kenan Sanchez. Councilwoman Reynolds Brown. Councilman Squilla. Councilman Tarbenberger. Council President Clark. Aye, the ayes are 16 and nays are 0. Majority of members present voting in affirm that the bill passes. Mr. Decker 160811. An ordinance amending Chapter 16300 of the Philadelphia Code entitled Maintenance and Supervision by adding a new section requiring that all city buildings and facilities with bathrooms open to the public have baby di diaper changing stations and require the installation of diaper changing stations in connection with capital projects. This bill has been heard on two separate days. The question is, shall the bill pass finally? Mr. Decker, call the roll. Councilwoman Bass. Councilwoman Blackwell. Councilman Dom. Councilman Green. Councilman Greenlee. Councilwoman Gim. Councilman Heenan. Councilman Jones. Councilman O'Neill. Councilman O. Councilwoman Parker. Councilwoman Corona Sanchez. Councilwoman Reynolds Brown. Councilman Squilla. Councilman Taubenberger. Council President Clark. All right, the ayes are 16 and nays are 0. Majority of members present voting in the affirmative. The bill passes. Mr. Decker, do you have any additional resolutions? A resolution honoring and celebrating the 50th anniversary of Kwanzaa and specifically recognizing the work of, Kwan of the Kwanzaa Cooperative in Philadelphia and keeping the traditions of Kwanzaa alive in our city, thus solidifying the cultural significance of Kwanzaa to our citizens and to future generations. Introduced by Councilwoman Blackwell. She recognizes Councilwoman Blackwell. Thank you, Mr. President. I move for its adoption. Second. It's been moved and properly second. All those in favor say aye. aye. Those opposed, the ayes have it, and that resolution is adopted. And a resolution recognizing and honoring Janet Parrish from the Philadelphia Gas Commission on the occasion of her retirement and for her decades of service to the citizens and city of Philadelphia, introduced by Councilman Green. Chair recognizes Councilman Green. Thank you, Council President. I move for the adoption of the resolution. It's been moved and probably second. All those in favor say aye. Those opposed, ayes have it, and that resolution is adopted. And a resolution authorizing the Committee on the Environment to hold hearings regarding adoption and, achieve, and achievement of a zero waste goal for the City of Philadelphia, introduced by Councilman Green. Chair, one more time, recognize Councilman Green. Thank you, Council President. I move for the adoption of the resolution. It's been moved and properly second. All those in favor say aye. Those opposed, ayes have it, and that resolution is adopted. And a resolution authorizing the Committee on Public Health and Human Services to conduct, uh, public, conduct, to conduct hearings concerning the Board of Health's proposed regulations relating to the tobacco, re, to the tobacco retail, retailing license and further asking the administration and the Board of Health not to move forward on any regulations pertaining to the tobacco retailing license until Council can conduct hearings on the impact these regulations could have on businesses in the surrounding communities. Ooh. Introduced by Councilman Taubenberger. All right. Before we do that, Chair recognize Councilman Greenlee. Uh, thank you, Mr. President. Uh, I certainly don't like to speak against a resolution uh, or a resolution for a hearing, but I would point out that this resolution goes further by asking the Health Department uh, not to move forward with uh, regulations, even though I think, as was pointed out a few weeks ago, we just commended those regulations. Um, you know, Mr. President, I've been called radical a few times. Uh, I don't know if I am on some of those issues, but I proudly will say I am radically anti-cigarette smoking. Uh, I feel there's no other legal product that is more injurious to your health than cigarettes. Um, for example, just the other day I saw on the news where doctors, some doctors recommend one or two alcoholic beverages might actually be good for your health. I don't think any doctor or anybody in their right mind would say one or two cigarettes are good for your health. Um, you know, Councilman Tom Berger spoke on the uh, concern of hurting businesses. And, I, and in public comment, the 7-Eleven uh, uh, representative talked about that. I'm certainly not for hurting businesses. Um, but I'm also against products that kill people. And I don't know how else to say it, but that's what cigarettes do. They kill you. And uh, I... I, the resolution talks about business owners seeing a decrease in the total value of their business. Well, I don't want to see, again, businesses hurt, but I don't want to see a decrease in the total value of people's health. That's what cigarettes do. And I know the representative talked about that this issue is not about tobacco. 
Well, with all due respect, it's not about cupcakes. It's exactly about tobacco. That's the issue we are talking about. And obviously, members can, uh, you know, have to do what they have to do. And I, again, I hate speaking against resolutions, but um, on this one, I, I am against any any statement that could be interpreted as uh, we, we in support of limiting of uh, lessening regulations on limiting sales of cigarettes. So uh, I personally will be speaking against this resolution, uh, voting against this resolution. I'm sorry. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, Chair recognizes Councilwoman Bass. Thank you, Mr. President. Um, I just wanted to uh, join my colleague, Bill Greenlee, and number one, I want to thank the, the resolution sponsor, uh, Councilman Al Toggenberger, for uh, having an extensive dialogue with us on this matter. But unfortunately, we just weren't able to come to a conclusion that we could both agree with. Um, as a body, we did, in fact, uh, overwhelmingly support the Board of Health's regulations and uh, what they were going to do, which was really to address the oversaturation of cigarettes, uh, primarily in low income minority neighborhoods, African American and Latino neighborhoods. We have a saturation where you are three times more likely to have exposure to cigarette advertising or um, uh, you know, uh, some sort of form of uh, attraction or marketing uh, in those neighborhoods than you would if you were in other neighborhoods. And I think that that just is just profoundly wrong. Um, unfortunately, I will not be able to support uh, my colleague and good friend's resolution today. Um, but I, as he mentioned earlier, that uh, also the Board of Health uh, does not need our uh, support or authority to continue on with their actions. So um, I know that they are taking action to be able to uh, address this very, very important issue. And uh, my fear is that as we wait, as we contemplate, as we continue to discuss, more and more of our young people are being uh, attracted to cigarettes. And as we know, cigarettes are addictive. Uh, once you are hooked, it is very, very difficult uh, to become a non-smoker. I know this. I have many people in my family who have either um, uh, been smokers, uh, had cancer, we believe, from cigarettes, and are currently smoking who are trying to kick the habit. It's very, very difficult. And uh, again, this exposure start. Excuse me. Uh, this exposure started uh, at a very young age, and uh, the more we can do to lessen that exposure, the better, I think, for our community. So, unfortunately, I won't be able to support this resolution. Thank you. Thank you, Councilman.
Okay, we're going to, sorry for the brief recess, we had a little procedural issue we had to resolve. Uh, chairs will now recognize Councilman Taubenberger. Thank you, Council President. Uh, it's been advised to me that there's a technical uh, error in the actual description. I'd like to withdraw that uh, resolution, and I will resubmit it next week. Thank you. Thank you, Councilman. All right, Mr. Decker, so we'll proceed with the next resolution. We want to withdraw that resolution. We want to do a motion? All right, we want to do a withdrawal. It's been moved and properly seconded that the resolution be withdrawn. All in favor? Aye. Those opposed? Ayes have it, and that resolution will be withdrawn. And a resolution authorizing Council's Committee on Com Commerce and Economic Development and Legislative Oversight to hold hearings examining the city's diversity and inclusion strategy for the, for the planned $300 million investment in the Port of Philadelphia and its economic impact in the city of Philadelphia, introduced by Councilwoman Bass on behalf of Councilman Johnson. Chair recognize Councilwoman Bass. Thank you, Mr. President. I move for the adoption of the resolution. Okay. It's been moved and properly second. All those in favor say aye. aye. Those opposed, ayes have it. That resolution is adopted. And a resolution authorizing Council's committees on commerce and economic development and legislative oversight to hold hearings examining diversity and inclusion in SEPTA capital project spending and its economic impact in the city of Philadelphia, introduced by Councilwoman Bass on behalf of Councilman Johnson. Chair, one more time, recognizes Councilwoman Bass. Thank you, Mr. President. I move for the adoption of the resolution. It's been moved and properly second. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Those, are, those opposed, ayes have it, and that resolution is adopted. And a resolution recognizing and honoring Ralston, Ralston Center for Improving the Health and Quality of Life of Older Philadelphians on the occasion of its 200th anniversary celebration, introduced by Councilman O. Chair, recognize Councilman O. Thank you very much. I move for the adoption of the resolution. It's been moved and probably second. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Those opposed, ayes have it, and that resolution is adopted. There are no other resolutions on the final passage calendar, Mr. President. Thank you very much, Mr. Decker. That concludes our calendar, Councilman's calendar for the day. Any speeches on the part of the minority? Chair recognizes Councilman O. Thank you very much. Just two items I wanted to note. One is that uh, tomorrow at uh, 10 a.m., uh, there will be a committee hearing, uh, Global Opportunities, Creative Innovative Economy, regarding uh, traumatic brain injury uh, versus uh, post-traumatic stress disorder and the treatment of uh, veterans in the health care area, particularly by the Veterans Administration. Uh, I'm very uh, honored to have uh, Dr. Edna Foa, who was uh, 2010 Time Magazine's Top 100 uh, most influential people in the world. She'll be uh, testifying here uh, along with uh, Dr. Douglas Smith, uh, who is the Executive Re Director of University of Penn Center for Brain Injury and Repair and other dist distinguished uh, uh, speakers. On a happier note, um, I'd like to say that, uh, you know, I put a flyer on everybody's uh, desk to encourage you to come out, especially uh, uh, Councilman Blondell Reynolds Brown, who uh, is our um, resident artist. Uh, we have our award show for PHL Live on uh, December the 8th, and uh, I'm very um, thankful that uh, Vassy, whose uh, uh, hit song just uh, uh, made it to number one on the dance charts, uh, will be co hosting and performing three of her hits along with uh, Chill Moody, American Dinosaur, Job People and Keith from up the block, very funny comedian. All of this is for a good cause. It's something that, you know, I could not do without this council body. And it's really about jobs and the economy for those with uh, talent. Thank you very much. Thank you, Councilman. Uh, speeches on behalf of the majority. Chair recognizes Councilman Jones. Thank you, Mr. President. Today I rise once again. November just seems to be the uh, month of elections, uh, some of them rigged. Uh, and I want to bring to your attention once again the popular vote versus the electoral college vote uh, that seemed to confuse the masses once again. And I don't speak about the national presidential elections. I'm talking about the who wore it best competition, fashion competition, uh, done by Men's Fit uh, this week. And I want to thank 
uh, those who participated, uh, uh, South Philadelphia's own uh, Smooth Squiller, uh, <laughs> Councilman Dom, who uh, represented the uh, more uh, business class, uh, Bobby Heenan, who jumped up on the stage, jumped up on the stage from a prone position to participate and strut down the runway. But I want to also thank the judges, uh, Councilwoman Bass, Councilwoman Sanchez, and Councilwoman, no, no, hold it, wait a minute. See, there are those are Republicans again. Councilman <laughs> Heenan jumped from a prone position. I want to enter him in the Guinness Book of Records. <laughs> Well, I witnessed it, uh, Mr. President, and I just want to say no, dis no, no, no disrespect. Oh, oh, wait a minute. There were representatives from uh, Harrisburg, Senator Street, uh, representing young folk, millennials, uh, and Representative Harris, also from South Philadelphia, participated. We strategically kept you out the competition. I understand. Uh, Thank to you, make sir. Sure. But, but. Councilman Green, he, he walked down there and he won the election by the most narrowest margins. We, we've, we got a recount going. Uh, but he pulled off a John Shaft oh, move. No, no. And, I, and I mean, he was looking good, I'll give it to him. But he wasn't the Richard Roundtree John Shaft, he was the Samuel L. Jackson oh, yeah. version of John Shaft. <laughs> I, I really, I was just kidding. Oh, we, are, we are happy. He's got bragging rights for one year. We're already going to the gym, getting ready for next year because of him. Uh, he was striking oh, and God. represented us all well. Uh, but I wanted to bring attention to Men's Fit, which is the charity we did it for. Uh, it, 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 Men's Fit provides dignity in clothing to people going for interviews who are returning citizens, maybe coming home from jail, uh, people from the homeless community. They've serviced it over a 1,000 uh, individuals to help get employment. 46% of them are still working, uh, Mr. President. Um, they provided, because of that employment, $8 million worth of tax revenues, state, city, and federal. 87% of those individuals um, are, oh, no, 67% are still working after years of employment. 87 uh, other social service organizations work with them to put the Build-A-Bear back on the payroll and give them a sense of self-esteem. 72% of them are African Americans, 9% uh, are white, 15% Hispanic. And I want to say, uh, my colleagues simply look marvelous. Uh, right. They were simply marvelous. And I want to thank them all for participating and uh, look forward to it next year. Thank, thank you, you Mr. Councilman. President. Thank you, Councilman. Very worthy endeavor. Chair recognizes Councilwoman Gim. Thank you very much, Council President. I just wanted uh, to have my colleagues thank them very much. Um, we have our pre-K session and enrollment underway right now um, and wanted to encourage and see if my colleagues uh, have on their desk a sample script that they could film upstairs with Channel 64 and put out on their social media. But it helps remind people that we have a window between now and December 15th to enroll everybody in pre-K. Um, we're looking for 2,003 and four-year-olds for, uh, for classes at more than 75 locations all across the city. Um, it's exciting and we would love, uh, my, I would love our colleagues to all participate and try to get the word out to everybody. Let them know that this is a great citywide investment. Thank you. Thank you, Councilwoman. She recognizes Councilwoman Kiona Sanchez. Thank you. I was part of the Electoral College, and it was not fixed. <laughs> um, I, I, I want to talk about an issue, but real quickly, just wanted to thank Councilwoman Parker for her words around the workforce diversity. I really believe that in addition to the workforce diversity, you know, our business development plan, um, what we're doing in terms of our capital investment in the city, rebuild water department and all, is probably the biggest economic development tool the city has seen since the seat of so uh, for me, where we park it, pun, uh, pardon the pun, uh, how we manage it, um, I do believe that it is very, very doable. We have a mayor that has demonstrated the political will to do so and, and a council um, ready to step up to the plate. So I look forward to that. But I wanted to thank the University of Pennsylvania's um, 
decision to uh, make the, the campus uh, a sanctuary campus. I think it's hugely important um, in, in the scheme of the rhetoric that we hear nationally and how Philadelphia has been targeted. I think it's important. My own son is at Penn State. He's a freshman. I told him not to get involved, but he got involved in student government. Um, last night, they spent three hours debating this issue, um, and the student council also passed a unanimous resolution to ask the Board of Trustees to join the University of Penn and other campuses in saying that they will be a sanctuary um, uh, campus. And at the same time, I want to say shame on you to Senator Toomey, who was reelected by many, many voters in the city of Philadelphia, um, and it continues to push this theory that he is going to financially punish the constituents who disagree with him. Um, it goes to the core of the very debate that we're talking about in our democratic process and what Mayor Kenny has now called the Fourth Amendment right. Everybody is entitled to an opinion and a due process. And this notion that the city refuses to cooperate is just really not wrong. I was talking to Councilman Green, who's, who's an attorney at this. Um, you know, we are just basically saying to the federal government, follow the law. We're asking the federal government to follow the law and to officially go into a court and get a judicial order so that they can detain someone based on something other than hold the person until we feel like charging them. I mean, this is all, when, when I hear the spin about law abiding and, and our sanctuary status going against the law, no, we're actually trying to defend the law in our democratic process. So. Don't listen to the spin. I think this goes to the core of who we are um, as an American democratic society. Um, and so I want to say kudos to Penn, continue to support our mayor on, on this position and his new designation as, as the Fourth Amendment uh, a city and say that uh, this is one of those times where we're going to have to continue to educate folks uh, around the facts and unfortunately this election has demonstrated that sometimes facts don't matter in this particular case people matter to us thank you thank you councilwoman chair recognize councilman green thank you council president i want to thank um councilman parker for her statement and her resolution today um we all know this the city of philadelphia has an issue of poverty and one of the ways we can address poverty is economic development and one of the areas of doing that is using the city as an asset to provide economic development opportunities for the city, uh, the citizens of our city, uh, especially from a workforce perspective as well as an entrepreneurship perspective. And the comments from Councilman Parker um, illuminated some of the issues we've had in the city for a number of years. I've often said that we need a Maynard moment in this city. And when I say Maynard, I'm referring to um, the late mayor. Maynard Jackson of Atlanta. Um, until we have that Maynard moment, some of the issues that she talked about will not occur. And I hope through um, her resolution and the work we will work on collectively together regarding the rebuild process will provide us with that Maynard moment. Also, I want to thank um, Councilman Sanchez for her comments um, regarding um, the Fourth Amendment city issue. It's unfortunate um, so shortly after the election that um, Senator Toomey, who represents the entire Commonwealth of Pennsylvania and the citizens of the city of Philadelphia, would make those comments. Um, from a somewhat lighter note, I would like um, all members of council to join me um, tomorrow. I put a flyer on each person's desk. Uh, the Special Olympics uh, partnering with Drexel University is having their Philadelphia Polar Plunge to raise money for Special Olympics. Uh, there are various plunge opportunities for the high school plunge will be 10 a.m. to 12. The business plunge is 12 to 2. Uh, the general plunge is from 5 p.m. to 7 p.m. And for those who still think they have millennial um, aspects to them, the university plunge is from 7 p.m. to 9 p.m. and it'll be at Drexel University. Uh, you can find out more information or register at plungepa.org. This is part of a national movement of Special Olympics to raise money for all the great work that they do. And on a final note, since uh, Councilman Jones um, tried to uh, point out some challenges in the Electoral College or a popular vote, um, from my understanding, talk with the electors that were participating in that process, um, I won based the Electoral College and also the popular vote. Uh, so I just wanted to remind um, 
Councilman Jones. Also, I just wanted to let him know on a little secret. I did actually model at the University of Virginia, so that, um, that, that helped me out. Mr. President, Mr. President, <laughs> the recount has come in, oh my God. and there's a new winner. His name is Councilman da uh, David O. He won. <laughs> No matter, no matter what way you try to change the outcome of the election, I'll just remind you what some people at UVA used to call me, Green, Derek Green. Oh. Yeah, buddy. Uh, <laughs> all right. <laughs> you got to love it. Um, okay. The chair recognizes Councilwoman Reynolds Brown. How about that. Um, so let me just echo the remarks made by Council Members of Parker Green and Canone Sanchez, and we'll simply seek to make rebuild a Maynard moment and look at it that way. That will be the goal, to make rebuild a Maynard moment. On be your uh, behalf, Mr. President, I want to remind our colleagues to please uh, greet the women of Alpha Kappa Alpha Sorority next door uh, who have been uh, quite patient in allowing us to conduct our business and looking uh, happily towards your presence for the luncheon this afternoon. Thank you, Mr. President. Thank you, Councilwoman. And the Chair recognizes Councilwoman Blackwell. Thank you, Mr. President. We wanted to note to all of you that on Saturday from 11 to 4 at the Penn Museum, we have annual holiday traditions there, so certainly all are invited. We also will have at our annual big holiday party where we do 5,500 to 6,000 people. We will have, uh, in fact, the mayor's office is sponsoring a table there to register people for pre-K. So they do have another opportunity to register if folks haven't before then, and certainly we invite all of you to pass that uh, information around. And finally, if any of you don't know my sister, she's on the second row to my right. That's my big sis. We call her Sissy. So if you don't, you will. That's just that's just Sissy to us. And thank you all very much. Thank okay. you, Mr. Thank President. you, Councilwoman. That concludes our speeches today, and the chair recognizes Councilwoman Reynolds Brown for a motion to adjourn. Yes, Mr. President, I move that City Council stand adjourned until Thursday, December 8th, 2016, at 10 a.m. Thank you. It's been moved and probably second. The Council stand adjourned until Thursday, December 8th, 2016, 10 a.m. All those in favor say aye. Those opposed, ayes have it. Thank you all very much. <laughs>